Star Trek will not be presented tonight so that we may bring you the following special program. Word Balloon is brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. Coming to Kickstarter from the mind of Franco, the man behind Teen Titans Go to the Library, Faye of the Moon, and All Yeah Comics, comes the new LXT, the adversarial fighting card game, live now on Kickstarter. LXT, Lux vs. Tenebris. Imagine a loved one has been spirited away to a land of terror and torture. Would you be willing to go after them and fight through a horde of acolytes of the Dark One just to get them back? Developed as a role-playing card game that can be played multiple ways. The cards will have full-color illustrations on the front and chock-full of stamps and moves on the back. You can also get the LXT Who's Who book with origin stories and information about all the characters. Still want more? Also available is the LXT Dark Atlas book, filled with pro stories about all the baddies and illustrations from a wide selection of comic artists. There are plenty of add-ons you can purchase separately like comic books, stickers, original art from the game, and more. It's going to be a howling good time. LXT, live, now on Kickstarter. Welcome back, everybody. Time again for another Oh Yeah Trek Watch. Uh, we got a little Star Trek talk that'll be in there. But as uh, the description of the episode said, we're going to talk about some uh, shows that are up and running. Uh, things like X-Men 97 and uh, Invincible and uh, Bad Batch, among others. And a whole lot of other uh, television talk. So John here, Franco here, Wayne here, Mitch here. Uh, good to see everybody. Wow, Mitch, lots of uh, Daredevil. Uh, yeah, uh, I well, you, know, you know, John, it's the 60th anniversary of Daredevil, Marvel Comics, Man Without Fair. And, you know, since I'm a guy who runs the greatest comic convention on the East Coast, north of Baltimore, I figured why not <laughs> celebrate that? So I'm going to have people like Mark Wade and Charles Soule and a lot of other great creators about, you know, Daredevil. And we're going to have themes about them. So I've decorated my little abode down here with Daredevil paraphernalia. And as you can see... The poster is a recreation by Jerry Ordway of Daredevil number one. Don't don't you have Charlie Cox coming too? Well, it's a good thing you asked me that. I do have Charlie <laughs> Cox coming on Sunday, August uh, August eighteenth. Well, there you go. On, uh, on, yes, so come down to uh, Connecticut and meet the man who's the current Daredevil, yeah. the Guardian Devil of Hell's Kitchen. Which I gotta honestly, Hell's Kitchen. I don't know. Maybe you guys know something more than I do. It's not as bad as it used to be. Well, they don't even call it Hell's Kitchen anymore. They no, I know. It's like, isn't it Clinton? Yeah. Isn't it Clinton or something? Yeah, yeah. It's Clinton. Well, yeah, it's identified, also, hasn't it? Also, Hell's Kitchen is like like four blocks. Like yeah, the... it's not a big deal. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, like, like, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's right past the theater district, like mm -hmm. past like, what ninth, and yeah, between fifty four yeah. and whatever. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the convention? Well, it's a good thing you asked that, Don Lenza. It is called Terrificon, Connecticut's Terrific Comic Con, as you can see across my boobies. No idea. <laughs> Only Mitch would mention oh. it. I don't know, Mike. It's just insane. But I digress. We're here to talk about John. Congrats to Franco and his Kickstarter. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, you just saw the commercial. Thank you, Johnny, for, for narration on the on the uh, uh, LXD oh, sure. uh, project. We are actually fully funded. We're actually thirty-eight dollars away from our stretch goal of having the card game be twelve instead of twelve cards. 18, Take my money! Eighteen cards. So we're we're thirty-five dollars away, and we still got nineteen days to go. So 
if someone wants to kick in uh, thirty five dollars or thirty eight dollars today, you, you'd make me happy because we reached I our seven bucks ultimate. Well, right here. Oh, we have a lot of people watching. Maybe uh, maybe uh, some of these people might be interested in uh, supporting the Kickstarter. Yeah, so, it'd be awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll rate. Get it. Have anything to plug? <laughs> well, well, we can't talk about what he wants. Was to plug. because of uh, art. Art calls me Wagams. Yeah. So I, I've now yeah, adopted yeah. the Wagams as my nom de plume. Yeah, Wagams, uh, Wayne, a good man, sir. Yes. That's I it. Like it. Good. good night, everybody. <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah, well, 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 I, I, I can plug Lego. Stand by. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh, it talks? Is that a sorting hat? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Ah, Ooh, interesting. interesting. Look, I can plug this. It's a blob action figure that I play with Ooh. during the show. Look at the realistic thing, and look at his open mouth. I mean, what does that suggest to you? Can you see that? Look at that. He's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I want something. Give it to me." Look at it. I'm becoming very weird. uncomfortable now. <laughs> Fred J. Dude, he's looking for a subway sub. <laughs> yeah, it, this is what happened to Jared. <laughs> oh, great. Good lord. Uh, let's be honest. I could. Uh, I could model for that action figure. Let's be honest. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I, uh, I, as a kid, everybody was skinny. Now they make fat action figures. So I'm, I'm like, yes, we live in a modern, magical. Well, time. not my name uh, right away, and I completely agree with him. The first two episodes of X Men '97 were so good. Couldn't agree more. It's a great start to the show. Didn't you like the segue there? Didn't you like the segue? Yeah. You picked up on that. There was the blob. You went right into X Men. Man, you guys are good. Yes. The best, uh, the best transitions are ones that we don't uh, billboard, but that's all right. I... <laughs> no, no, it's I fine. I, no, Honestly, I, I, know, I, I don't know about you because, again, this was 97. Do the math. 27 years ago, 30, uh, something like that. Um, I, I did not watch the X-Men cartoon. I was certainly aware of its popularity back then. And uh, I give them credit. I, again, I, I like being this kind of lab rat where – I come into something and don't uh, haven't watched the original, so I can like assess the reboot on its own merit. And goddamn, great show! Yeah. Really, art. Uh, I'm not a big X Men reader, but I'm certainly aware of you know enough of the players that I, I felt comfortable watching it. And mm -hmm. yeah, the the only slight comment I'd make is with uh, Jean Grey being uh, pregnant. Um, I wonder if she's giving birth to a full adult and not. <laughs> And not a child, because especially in the second episode, the baby bump is like a like the blob that you just showed. Gene got that. big. Yeah, she got really big, and it's like, are you sure there's more than one? Not more than one kid in there. Did I not? Did I? Uh, did I have a Mandela effect? I thought she had the baby. Then they named it Charles after Charles Nathan Charles Summer. Did I not see? Well, that? she was in labor. She was in labor. I know. Oh, I jumped ahead. I knew how it was going to end. Okay, sure. Oh, do you get? Do you? Did you get screeners, Mitch? No, I saw that. I just assumed that I, I, I don't know. I watched it last night. Maybe I was half asleep. I could have swore she had the baby at the very end. Because then the and other we Jean Grey showed Nathan. up. Huh? Yeah, Nathan was in the original series. Okay, okay. But okay. not as Nathan. As the adult Cable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, whatever. I and, I, I, and when the other Jean showed up, I'm wondering if that's Madeline Pryor. That's who I thought it was. Yeah, I wonder that yeah. too. Yeah, I'm but, wondering uh, if the one that showed up at the door was the real Gene, and if they're going to follow the comics, uh, then because Scott married Madeline and they had right. a kid, and that's Nathan. Right. right, right, yes, and then she becomes the Goblin Queen. Yes, with the that's weird right. because we did see Mister Sinister. Yeah, yes, we did. And what was I'm the sure. other thing? I do I, like how they did the callback to Magneto's uh, uh, purple costume there with the big M on it because yeah. I remember that cover, that classic X Men. Mm -hmm. I think John Romita Junior. cover it was. where he's standing there and uh, on trial, and that's the you know you see the the courtroom scene. And he's got his handcuffs there, and I go, oh, they recreated that scene from the cover. Look at that, Mitch is right. Jean Grey, she did give birth. See, I thought yeah, I she saw did that. give birth. No, no, yeah, she we, did give we, birth. We've said that like five times. I don't know, man. I'm not on a different time zone. But anyway, 
the weird thing is I had, effect. Go, I had to go remember all the uh, X-Men's powers because it's been so long since I really read an X-Men book. I go, oh, Bishop, yeah, 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 and Gambit, yeah, 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 because those were the good X-Men. Gambit's still you know, lame. That's when I jumped off the book in the 90s because it started getting Yeah, nuts. no, no, but Gambit is still lame. It, yeah. it Gambit, is Gambit part of Gale's uh, new lineup that's coming in the comic? I really, I, I saw, I, I saw the, the, the briefest of headlines yeah, regarding yeah. that Marvel made at South by Southwest, but yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I don't know the full details. I so many years ago, the X Men were great with Claremont and Byrne, and I, I, honestly, that's the pinnacle. That's the highest it'll ever get, in, in my opinion. I don't and, agree, but well, but then you had little moments that it was good when you had uh, Josh Smith. Whedon did it with John Cassidy. It was cool. And then you had Grant Morrison came on for a bit. They turned the beast into a big kitty cat looking thing. And but it has these moments over the 50, 60, 60 years now. Yeah, 60 years of the X-Men. But I don't know. It got so convoluted. It was it, I get I don't know who can keep track of that book. I don't know if they've actually had a reader out there that's actually read it for the last 40 years consistently because there's so many reboots and all that. It's hard to keep track of it. So granted, this TV show, good luck. They're trying to keep that continuity going. So, like, no, nothing's changed since 1997. We're good. I mean. And uh, Scoot is asking, why, why is Bishop on the team? I like, you know, and again, you know, I am not a, a, a typical X-Men fan at all. Uh, a Bishop's one of my favorite X-Men characters. Yeah. I like Bishop. No, I always no, no, no. When this show in the mid-90s, Bishop was still part of the X-Men crew. So, sure. yeah, if you're going to pick up. 20 something years later, yeah, he was he, that's why he's there. Because Bishop came back in time to find out who was the person, right? That caused the mutant, the, 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 the yeah, the Armageddon, the days of future stuff. past stuff, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, that's where we also got Nimrod. So, like, if you watch <laughs> yep. the old episode, <laughs> Nimrod, yeah. like I've been re watching the old episodes again because we didn't get all of them in Canada, we got like I think the first two seasons, but not the rest well, for whatever why? reason. Uh, probably rights. Oh, you Canadians. I know. Uh, B, B thing says Gail's roster Gambit, Rogue, Jubilee, Nightcrawler, and Wolverine. Yeah. I, I like that lineup, actually. Um, well, I, they I, had the big, I was going to say the big reboot with Claremont and Jim Lee that had the core group that we're seeing, isn't it? Yeah, it had Wolverine. Yeah. I think well, they had the, they had the two teams. Didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they uh, had the gold and the blue. Oh, remember blue. Yeah. One was Uncanny X-Men and one was X-Men. And God was at heart trying to keep track of everything. And then and then the whole Heroes Reborn thing started. Everything started except the X-Men. Those were left alone. It was like, what the hell is going on over here? Yep. Well, with the X-Men, they did the days of, uh, not, uh, Age of Apocalypse storyline. Yep. Yep. Where they took them all into the future. And then some of that stuff has bled over. Back with back into the regular X Men line when I was reading it. Now, do you think it was, the a, was it the popularity of the comic book that spurred Fox to make a live action X Men movie back sure. in the two thousands? You think that's what it was? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah because even even uh, things like I remember uh, an interview with uh, Wolverine, uh, uh, Hugh Jackman, when he first got the job, and then he he went for an audition, and then came back and then was going back to Canada where they were filming and he had trouble with, with uh, a visa or something like that. So they told him, just tell him you're going on an audition. Yeah. And, and one of the security guards at the airport recognized him that he had been there the week before for an acting job. And he goes, wait, you're only coming for an audition. I thought you were here for, but, and he broke down and he said, oh, I got a movie part and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then he told the guy I'm playing Wolverine and the guy freaked out, you know, cause he was a huge Wolverine fan and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys remember too uh, the actor, good character actor, uh, and actually he was on Batwoman of all things. Doug Ray Scott was they wanted him originally to be yep. Wolverine. Yep, and, and he couldn't get out of the deep. He was in Mission Impossible, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep, yep. And they so, yeah. screwed that up. But Mike's, he did. I'm sorry, Mike Scott so, did. Sorry, uh, he did play a comic book character. He was. Um, oh crap! I just lost it. It'll come back to me. Mike Jones says Nimrod. that it was very Claremont, Jim Lee pl uh, in plot and costumes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that bothers me about the show, though. What's and, that? And I don't know if it's lack of 
music or or something it's i don't know watching the episode something was nagging at me that i it's just it seems out of sync Mm. i know that it was 97 and maybe they they had the same production values but it just there was something off about it either there wasn't like music or i gotta watch them again Um, everything seems so two-dimensional you know the characters they were just too well that that you would expect if they're they're recreating the 97 thing but yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's funny because I felt like Storm's uh, acting, the voice acting, was a little stiff uh, and a little too '90s for oh, yeah. modern taste. But then again, like like we've said, it it is trying to kind of you know have a through line from the original show, so I accepted it. I like the look of it. I and I'm glad, yeah. and it works. Uh, the design looking as much as it did of the 90s show. I think it works great. And also I noticed Wolverine's accent is not as Australian. Wasn't it kind of Australian in 97? No, that's still oh, Cal Dodd. It was a different, different card too where they had Wolverine. That was a different one. No, the first one. Yeah, the first one they did in the 80s uh, when they've tried to the Pride of the X-Men, that one off. Mm-hmm. I got that somewhere. But yeah, he, the guy had an Australian accent for some bizarre reason. You know, hey, Mike, uh, how's it going? I was like, yeah, and then comments on the animation. Uh, not my name says it's uh, much better than the original, I think. And B thing says, my friends and I thought the animation looked a bit too much like Archer. That's mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, and Chris says, I remember giving going to the opening night for the first X Men movie, and when the lights came on, someone s- started scat singing the cartoon theme, and the whole crowd joined in. That's great, man. Oh, yeah. 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 You can't yeah. hate you can't hate that theme song. That's that theme song is great. There is a little uh, bit of it in the X Men movie theme, just as the 20th Century Fox here, and it's like, hey, that's the little. Oh, that's cute. Theme song. Well, I just yeah. remember in the in Doctor yeah. Strange when uh, when he when he met with the Illuminati, and yeah. uh, and right. uh, Xavier's uh, wheelchair pulls up, yep. the music kicked in, and everybody started laughing and applauding. Oh, and it was also the same wheelchair. Yeah, that big yellow thing. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, mm. Scoot, what do, you, what do you got here, Scoot? It actually fits in pretty well with the old show, except Bishop being on the team with no explanation. I rewatched the whole series over the last month because you have no life, Scoot. Exactly. That, that, that's why you did they're gonna, that. They're, they're going to explain why he's in and, and why they are why they're, they haven't explained it before. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll come up. I, I, that's think, I take umbrage with the person that said it looks like the Archer animation. The Archer animation, it doesn't. I think no, the Archer animation looks totally enough. different. Yeah, yeah, it's got like yeah. shading and stuff on it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, which I like. Yeah. I like this, the Archer animation very this much. This is definitely a '90s looking cartoon. It's almost like remember that Spider-Man cartoon that was on back then too. The mm-hmm. Spider-Man yeah. Unlimited. Where was the alternate universe Spider-Man Unlimited? Uh, no, no, just no, the regular Spider-Man. The regular Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. The Fox one. Wacky. Yeah, right. Wacky the, Fox, the Fox show, sure. Where yeah. Ed Asher was uh, Jay Jonah, which was fantastic. That Lou Grant was. Uh, uh, it wasn't. Was it Ed Asher? In yeah. the in the Fox one, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Ed, Ed Asher is always going to be Granny Goodness to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, a radio buddy of mine, Brian Peck, has done a lot of animation voiceover work and he's worked with he did work with Ed Asner uh, a few times while Ed was still with us and Ooh. said he goes I can't believe I'm standing next to Lou Grant doing <laughs> doing voiceover stuff so um, oh that's funny I, I, Tom Account says watching X97 whetted my appetite for new Justice League yeah totally man you know and we're getting we're getting new animated movies here and there uh, you know Ooh. we had Crisis on Infinite Earths and I know I forget what's what the next. Uh, Did you watch movie? that thing? That was horrible. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah. That's what I keep hearing, man. No, it's I'm waiting bad. for it. To, well, you I'm know what it is. It's, 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 it's because they throw your curveball. Because everybody knows of people of our age knows Crisis of Infinite Earths, the Wolfman Perez epic story. So you yeah. go into it thinking of that, but if you don't know that they've kind of remade it in their own world with their own ten episode movies prior to this, that you really have to watch to understand what they're doing. It's not the same thing, so it's a bit of a letdown going into it, you know. You're like, "Hey, where's uh, where's where's everybody? Where's the anti monitor? Why is Amazo here? This isn't the story I read." But it's kind of I- like that first attempt at uh, Superman Doomsday, way way back. Yes, not Reign of the Superman, and how that was very different yeah. from 
from the comments. So I get it. Mario yeah. says that uh, the Cyclops fight scene was awesome. Totally agree. Yeah, yeah. they kind of made him a good badass. I don't yeah, remember I, him being that much of a badass, uh, <laughs> awesome guy. Again, I am so not a typical X Men fan, and I've always loved Cyclops. I, I mean, I, I love the villain. Well, I, 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 like, I like Cyclops, but in in the cartoon, and again, I didn't go back and watch them. But from what I remember, he was kind of like a I don't know, wishy washy a little bit. Well, he was, he was a dry. wiener. Yeah, he was he was kind of wishy washy. But this one, God. oh hey, just throw Cyclops out of a plane, and he can. He, nobody has to catch him in yeah. flight. He'll land on wow. his own. You know, and well, I was like, that's, that's pretty his- damn cool. He can use his force blast to lower himself down if he wants. I well, it's just like the scene from the A team with the tank. And yes, yeah, the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they shoot it and they go down this way and stuff. I liked when they took his visor and thought, "Oh man, now he can't hurt us." And it's like wrong, <laughs> Ying. Yeah, <cool>. yeah. <laughs> that was great, man. So that's funny. All right, not my name like that first Superman Doomsday movie. Well, well, well yeah, some so people like the quest for peace. What are you going to do? It did. You know, Superman four. Absolutely. But, uh, no, it's cool. It's cool. Now, what do you get? You know what's funny? I told you this before when we were talking this afternoon. Don't you feel weird that we're in this baby? I guess we're baby boomers, or I'm Gen X. I don't know what exactly 1966 and above is. I think that's Gen X. Right? Yeah, you're Gen X. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, but the yes. fact I'm on the cusp. I'm. I'm. You're, on, you're the guy. But I said we're are, are, are we the, So are I'm kind of on the cusp. Go ahead. Are we the majority right now for like? Consumers, or is that, or is it younger folks? Because it seems everything's geared towards us. It's like I think I think we're the only ones still watching television. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we're the only ones with money to buy the cable uh, subscriptions right. every month or whatever the hell is called streaming. Because my kids my son it. never watches TV. He's always on no. his phone. So no, yeah. no. So maybe that's why we like it. They're making it just for us now. Yeah, baby. finally. Like me TV, I was telling Johnny that I said, "Do you ever think that all this me TV stuff same just at our age and nobody else cares anymore?" You know. So. Well, and I and I was telling Mitch that, um, it's I I think the media companies are recognizing yeah, not yeah. to just program everything for the youth culture, and that there are a lot of a, a big portion of the population that is uh, Gen X and still boomers out there as well. That, you know, again, it's like, well, we want our program. We want programming for us, too. And that's why, like I was telling Mitch, and Mitch knows because, you know, a, a terrific on regular, John Wesley Shipp, uh, making his career these days in the Hallmark movies, yes, yes, Lifetime yes. movies, and all that stuff. And it's like, because we, we were all talking about Northern Exposure and Janine Turner and everything. And it's like, well, yeah, now, you know, they make those Christmas movies and those romance movies, yeah. and they have um, a gen x and boomer uh couples that are hooking up oh, and yeah, you got yeah. Dean turner and john wesley ship or you know, i'm watching i'm like oh my god that's jacqueline smith and my wife's like what and i'll just like freak out because i see these actors that i haven't seen since the 70s and 80s and 90s popping up on there i'm like oh my god oh look she looks okay and what happened to her and oh my god he's still alive you hear that a lot around this house so <laughs> you know uh, uh, two sheds uh, joining the conversation. Always good to see Chris. And he says, "Me TV setting in that lineup is the best thing on television." That's what, that's what you and I were talking about. I said they don't have new programming; it's just recycling all the old stuff. And that's why when I go into a, a, like a Walmart, there's no more new DVDs, but they have a whole wall of like TV shows, like Magnum, all eight seasons, uh, Heart to Heart. Also, and I'm like, first off, who's buying digital media anymore, or physical media? And then I'm like. And why are they just all old TV shows? I'm like, ooh, F Troop. Look well, at that. And I, have an answer, I have an answer to that because these streamers yeah. that um like like Paramount Plus, don't worry, this Trek talk. Um, once again, the Trek movies are on HBO Max and not on Paramount Plus. The odd couple all of a sudden is not on Paramount Plus because it's being licensed to other streamers. And it's uh so no, if anything. I really think we're in the midst of you may you better grab physical media while it exists yeah. because uh, you can't trust your streamer to uh, hang on to something and yeah. they yeah. may license it out. I mean, I don't mind them licensing it out to another channel, but to do it exclusively for six months, however many months, 
that sucks. It's like, and well, then I, I told don't... you they're editing a lot of this stuff too. So you might go crazy. Like, wait, I remember this being in a certain episode or a certain episode that you'll never see again, because like the Simpsons, I know there's about three or four that are gone. There's a Michael Jackson episode where she goes to a mental hospital and there's yeah. a patient. Oh, that's not a... Michael Jackson did the voice for it, but that's yeah. gone. They don't they show don't, that. Really, they don't, they don't, uh, no, nope. really. Cause, yeah. um, I have I have a buddy uh, that loves the Brady Bunch, and every Sunday we uh, do a call with four of us and do a watch party, and we'll watch two episodes of the Brady Bunch. And I know a lot of uh, episodes, as far as streamings goes, the reason why they're yanked sometimes are music rights. Oh, that's why. Oh, and, okay. oh, absolutely. And so, like the Davy Jones Brady Bunch episode is not uh, on uh, is not streaming. You could buy it in physical media. Yeah. But yeah, and the same with the odd couple. There are tons of episodes. I, where they I was wondering why that is because when you saw it, there was like they'd show the episode numbers, but there's numbers skipping around. I'm like, hey, where's this, 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 and this? That's yep. the reason why because of yep. like music scores. Ah, Absolutely. And that was the Northern a, Exposure thing for years. They couldn't run that great, show. There's, I mean, I'm mo much more of a fan of the 70s Bob Newhart show, but the uh, the uh, in the New England in Newhart yeah. show, of the 80s, there's a great episode. Where uh, Dick is pretending to be a millionaire, and he's at this high highbrow party, and he's there with Merv Griffin, and at one point they sing, uh, "I want to go back to my little grass shack in Kiani Kalu, Hawaii," and yeah. Merv is singing lead, and Bob is singing backup, and it's ridiculous. It is just absolutely ridiculous, and it's so great because it's so atypical of Newhart's humor, and and I again it burned in my brain because I'm Rain Man, as we all know. When it comes to this crap, and uh, and I'm like, where the hell's that episode, or where's that performance? And they cut the song out because of the rights to the song. Is that like why WKRP? You don't see that because the whole show is um, all about music, right? It was for the longest time, and I don't even know now if you watch streaming. They had to change a lot of the hit radio tunes that were on the show proper because yeah. Tiny Answer was on one, and Goodbye Stranger, and so many other songs that were. Definitely, you know, hits of the moment. And, yeah, they changed them uh, for the uh, initial release of uh, the uh, the DVDs. Yeah. And it took a long time for them to finally get the rights. Well, didn't so it happen with Happy Days? Wasn't there Bill Haley in the comments? The real the original theme song was like one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock rock. Yep. And then yep. there's the Happy Days song. I'm like, that's not well, the song I remember. So. And streaming on Paramount, again, who owns Happy Days, uh, they only streamed the second season. And again, they yank a lot of, or no, they've they've added more season, uh, episodes since, but a lot of episodes don't run because of uh, original songs. Oh, so well, there you I, go. It's crazy. Man, it's well, like what are Miami you going to do? Vice trying to get all the rights <laughs> from Miami Vice because that's basically. Oh, a, is that another one that they can't show now? It took a long, time. It took a long, it's a long time rock video. Well, if they yeah, if they cut out the scenes, then it's just like you There's just get no five show. minutes of them yeah. getting in the car. And then getting Pretty out of the car. <laughs> There's the film <laughs> talking, a lot of, talking lot to more, the alligator. A lot more Jan Hammer uh, music. Yeah, that yeah. Was, you wonder Jan why was... the, uh, the music for it. Well, hey, don't make fun of Jan Hammer. I have an autograph record back here. I'm a big fan. Yeah. When they were doing this stuff, didn't they plan like you know one day we're going to syndicate this stuff? We can't get the rights. Right. To these no one thought that far out. Well, and also if you go back in old Hollywood. Um, and when even then, when I say old Hollywood, I really mean sixties and seventies. What yeah. they call source music was cheaper than uh, getting a composer to do a soundtrack. And now it's completely flipped the other way, where you know you use a hit song, and it's it could be six or even seven figures depending on the song to use yeah. it in a movie. And it's like, whoa, you know what the you know how did that change? But it did. Yeah. 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 So. Anyway. No, I know they spent a million bucks to get a Beatles song in the Indi that last Indiana Jones movie. And I'm just sitting there shaking my head, going, "Really? You needed that? A million dollars for that? Okay, whatever." No. So, magical mystery go. four because uh, whatever the director's name is, I can't think of it right now. Uh, Mangle. Yeah, he no, wanted no, the. No, he, James, he wanted James Mangle. Yeah, yes, he wanted that song. Yeah. Yep. The, the guy who gave us Logan, and. Uh, Bond and 
Ford versus uh, Ford. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari, uh, the Johnny Cash story, uh, the cop movie, Copland with Stallone. He made good movies. Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny is not one of them, but he made other good movies. So I liked I liked the Indiana Jones. What do you know? A lot more than you, apparently. That's it. Get out. I Take sort care. of liked it. I sort of liked yeah. it. The beginning's but, uh, good with the World War II stuff, and then it kind of goes off to whatever. So whatever. That's another story. So Star Trek, Johnny. Um, sure. Coming up in a couple weeks, uh, Discovery, April fourth, oh, and much God. like X Men Night. I know. Sorry, Francis. X Men ninety seven. Uh, uh, like it. We're gonna get uh, two episodes right away. Um, you know, I I gotta mention this because and it 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 just irked me so much. Uh, someone put out an article that, hey, Discovery matched a milestone achieved by Next Generation. And I'm like, well, I wonder what that might have been. So I read oh, the article. Star Trek related. <laughs> oh, by the way, someone someone have a microwave? I don't know who that is. It's not mine. So. Oh, I know who it is. And maybe maybe they could actually like uh, podcast with us rather than uh, text. But whatever. Um, the, uh, oh, I'm not what, texting. No, well, you're whatever. Anyway. Yeah, I left, I left my... Uh, I left my phone on. I just turned it off. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Well, yeah, ten minutes later, but thank you. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the uh, no, this are so I'm like, what is this milestone that Discovery had? Now listen to this. They're like, well, Discovery has been in production for seven years, and Next Generation was in seven years, and I'm like, yes, but and even in the article, they're like, well, one of the reasons why it was seven years was COVID. And the writers and actors. Right. So it's like, okay, fine. But they're like, hey, this is an accomplishment. And it's like, well, it took them seven years when when this season, this fifth season ends, to make 65 episodes. And uh, in that same time, Next Generation made 178 episodes. Yeah. I don't think that's an equal achievement. And I don't think it's really an achievement at all. Well, um, no, 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 Next Generation in seven years did not make 50 something shitty episodes like <laughs> Discovery did in they made more, yeah, years. they made more shitty episodes, they made right. more shitty episodes than they yeah, did, just, just not all in a row, not in a <laughs> row. Yeah. Yeah, here and there. They turn into little kids, and then there's the whatever episode where they so we'll see. You know, I honestly, I, I am very curious and hopeful, uh, despite my constantly crapping on Discovery. That maybe in this fifth season they might make it a little bit better. Maybe, maybe. Um, we'll see. What do they, got, what do they, got they got to lose? Oh, what do they have to lose? Yeah, yeah well, but they. But to, well, but to their credit, truth, truly, this isn't a, this isn't a backhanded compliment. They they do recognize that okay, um, people are saying that the show's been so depressing, and and the oh, they've telegraphed that this season is going to be more of a happy adventure romp than uh, previous seasons. So hopefully uh, there's that. And also I love um, the new, is he a captain or an admiral from Starfleet? And it's the guy, I can't remember his name, but Wayne, great Canadian actor who was on Galactica and was one of the, the one of the first revealed Cylons, the male yeah, Cylon. Yeah, yeah. Colum, Rennie. It's a three-part name. Okay. Lee Harvey Oswald. Pretty exactly. much. John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth, exactly. Is this guy a presidential assassin? And they also they also said um, because he had pointed ears and everybody assumed he might be a Romulan or a Vulcan, but apparently, no, it's a different um, species from the Enterprise era. Here we go. Thank you, Cooper. Yeah. Uh, Callum Keith Renee. Yeah. Or Rennie. Ready. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this guy. This guy, uh, Christ, his Galactica episodes were always fantastic. He had a he great is in a ton of genre TV. Like that's good. If if it's genre TV, he's done it. So oh, uh, Two Shed says I hope they bring back the Tardigrade. I wouldn't count on it, dude, because they got into uh, some uh, uh, legal hot water over that. Uh, oh really? They, yeah. Oh yeah. There's a computer. There's a video game that had tardigrades uh, that basically were doing the same thing, and it's like, yeah, and that that was created like ten years before Discovery, and it's like, uh, yeah, I think you stole our idea. Wow, 
So I don't know. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, that's funny. I didn't know Mike. He says he was from. Uh, uh, he was also in Due South, the Mountie uh, TV you show. Know, that's funny you bring that up because I was on my Northern Exposure obsession. But Due South was was that the same company, uh, Falsley and Brand, or was that just coincidence? It might have been. It was definitely the same era. Yeah, or close to it. Maybe it was yeah. after. Maybe Due South was after Northern Exposure. Mm. But I, I, I do kind of think it was close enough in eras. So, um. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see with disco, and again, we'll certainly talk about each episode as they come out. First, first uh, April fourth, uh, they're gonna they're gonna drop two, and then there's also a link to Next Generation in the uh, Discovery storyline. And I suspect I know what it is, and it's up to you guys if you want me to give my speculation or you want to wait. Do it. It's a traveler. No, it's, it's not a traveler. traveler. No, remember uh, the. Um, the episode of Next Generation, it was I think it was called The Chase, where um, Picard's old archaeology uh, teacher comes on board the ship, and he wants Picard to like go to this one planet and discover this one mystery about the seeding of oh, all yeah. the various alien species. That um, that uh, sculpture that he had in his uh, ready room, and uh, you open the top of it, and there were all these little uh, people inside the inside the bigger sculpture and it's uh they uh, everybody makes fun of the fact that in uh, generations at the end of the movie and after the yeah. enterprise b is d rather is you know destroyed and they're going through picard's stuff and he just kind of throws away the yep. i saw that and it's yeah. like and in the episode in the next gen episode he's like will do you realize this is over ten thousand years old and he's so and then in generations, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Just stepped on it. Hey, uh, what do you really want to see happen? There, there's no story arcs that got to be wrapped up. They're never going to go back. I thought maybe they'd go back to their original time, but that would screw up people not remembering them. So I don't think that's ever going to happen. They're going to stay there thousands of years in the future. What do you need to happen? She's going to become the end. Oh, what if Michael Burnham becomes the head of all Starfleet at the end? What about she that? Admiral Burnham. No, seriously, I think that's how it's going to wrap it up. I mean, you got to have Maybe. a big finale, right? What, what Grunge drives, takes over. What drives me nuts is, and I'm sure we've made this analogy before, is that um, whatever century they're now in, thousand years from when Discovery st started, they're like going to them with, oh, you've got this knowledge and everything. And it's like if we in the 21st century met up with a Viking. And are like, hey, we really need to. You you only have the knowledge to help us out. And of course, the Vikings' response will be, well, first you got to get a goat and sacrifice yeah, yeah. it to Thor and all the Norse gods. I mean, it's like I don't I don't understand why this technologically advanced era uh, is so dependent on on the Discovery crew. Wow. Well, uh, well, haven't you seen the movie Demolition Man? Yes. Oh yeah. Well, they they needed, they, you, needed a, yeah. they needed the old guy to stop to the renegades. Well, no, yeah. because how long have they been without warp drive? Did they say how long they were? Because I mean, it was only uh, it was it was a hundred. It was only a hundred and fifty years. Wow. Because, uh, oh, maybe. because maybe uh, maybe. the guy screamed and then turned all the dilithium. Yeah, 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 that was great. Yeah. But they needed uh, maybe they need somebody who's like familiar with going to planets to well, start the exploration sure. again. And, Strange new worlds and the whole Star Trek speech, you know. I guess we go. I guess. That's I bet you ten bucks that's how it ends. The last the last minutes of that show is her reciting the uh Captain Kirk opening, well, or something, you know. Cooper, uh, Cooper is right, it will end with a speech and lots yeah. of crime, a yeah. hell of a lot of crime. And Absolutely. Tilly Tilly will show up. <laughs> Tilly. Uh, Burnham, I, I noticed, I noticed she didn't grunge. get Tilly at, at uh, Trek oh Trek. well, <laughs> I've been offered Tilly, but I did get um, Celia Rose, uh, before I Gooding. That's it, I'm gonna remember her name for a second. Sorry, is off. coming to the show, so you know. oh, yes, you know, uh, Mitch, you, you, I know you sent the uh, I just sent you a graphic of all the Star Trek yeah, people. That so can, give me a minute and I'll because I gotta grab it from. Yeah, it's exactly. I can figure out how to put it up here. So no problem, man. No, I'll do I'm it because uh, you should promote it. Absolutely. I'm just a caveman, you know. 
Yes. <laughs> so, so Mitch, you and Jerry didn't go see Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters? No, I honestly, yeah, I can't tell you. Jerry, properly. Ghostbusters. Jerry Ghostbusters. Said, are we going to see Ghostbusters? And I said, I don't want to, I don't care. He goes, what do you mean? I go, I didn't get any good vibes from the trailers and the last one was good. It was entertaining, but at this time, I'm like, eh, okay. I, I say next week when we go see Godzilla versus Kong, we sneak into Ghostbusters. What? No, we go earlier. We go see yeah. Ghostbusters, then have lunch, then go see Godzilla versus Kong. This is what guys that have no more jobs do. <laughs> uh, and my wife goes, "Are you going on a play date with Franco and Jerry?" I'm like, "Yes." yes <laughs> but I don't think it's doing well. I think that I didn't read the reviews, but I, I have heard it didn't get well reviewed, and I. The box office projection is only like forty million dollars for an opening weekend. I'm like, that's not a lot of money. I think Madam Webb almost made twenty five, maybe, and she that sucked. You know, it's well, it's just available just, for rent or, or own now, like as of like two weeks ago, Madam yeah, Webb. Yeah, well, Madam me. Webb. Yeah, I think they'll come to your house if you pay them enough and act <laughs> and act out the whole the whole show. <laughs> not Sydney Sweeney though; she actually has a career, but definitely Dakota Johnson will come over. But uh, I don't know. I, I, why is Paramount releasing this in March was my first tip off that there might be a problem because typically the Ghostbusters are like summer blockbuster epics, you know, like, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in box office. Why are you putting it out so early? I don't know. Well, but also do does is this another example, much like the last Indiana Jones movie, where generationally uh, the the kids that are the main moviegoers are like, uh, yeah, we don't care. Yeah, this I asked my son 24, was going to be 24 on Sunday, and 26, I say, hey, you guys going to see Ghostbusters? They go, why would I? I'm like, God, don't be so cold. It's Ghostbusters. They're like, yeah, no, we're good. Well, like, and also, uh, the litmus test is going to be how well, although it's streaming and not in the theaters, the new uh, Roadhouse. Uh, yeah. With Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, and, and you know, and I know, I think we've talked about it in the past, and it's like, I I don't understand why they thought it was a good idea to remake Roadhouse. Well, because they're out well, of ideas. Two, two things I I read over the last week is one that like seventy something percent of of a household would rather wait for a movie to come out on streaming than go go to a theater, and then um, the other thing is that like a lot of these like you know it, it's generational like. Young yeah. people don't know about, you know, Ghostbusters and stuff like that. I think there's an Anne Hathaway movie coming out that's, a, I think it's a Harry Styles fan fiction. Like the the book is based on like you know this fan fiction that they wrote. They made a book out of it, and now they made a movie, and it's like the most watched like trailer ever for a streaming thing. And it's just it's like you know older lady falling in love with a younger guy, like he's a pop star or something like that. Well movie but like it's it's got like unbelievable amount of views and yeah. people waiting for this thing to come out on streaming so if they yeah. put taylor swift in ghostbusters they would have had a hundred million dollar box office opening well that that's certainly true she no I mean, that, that, so. that, no she uh the concert movie she did i see that's on disney now i see the ads mm -hmm. for it so that i don't know what that brought in but it must have been couple hundred well, million no, or at least yeah. something crazy no right? it was it was the right movie at the right moment yeah and everybody was on strike and we weren't getting new product and yeah. all of a sudden here come the swifties and a concert movie that doesn't violate any of the strike rules and it's a nope. brand new movie and boom i mean it's i, I think she I, was I, smart about getting it done but i i would wager that if she produced it outside of like you know the strike when, when the strike was happening still would have had the same results people are absolutely nuts about her I know. And, I know. and they couldn't they couldn't go see this thing in in theaters or whatever i know people that are that are well they did go see it in theaters but i'm um, i know people who, that have seen it in theaters and are still watching it on disney two or three times yeah. like you know since then that they're watching this thing so yeah. mike uh Mike Jones, I enjoyed the new Roadhouse. Very different from the original, but has its own charm, catering to modern audiences. Could have done without the weird CGI sheen on some of the fights. Well, and you know, Doug, Doug Lyman, the director, made it to be a box office movie. And yeah, uh, he was pissed when it went to streaming. He, yeah. was, very, he was very pissed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I imagine probably had some sort of deal 
where if the movie had grossed a certain percentage, he'd get a bump. And obviously all that's moot now because, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what? Maybe they shouldn't be making so many sequels. Maybe the audience has changed and we're just not realizing it because Barbie was original. That did big money. Oppenheimer was original. That did big money. The Taylor Swift, we just mentioned that to other Sydney Sweeney movie, which is like a, a Hallmark kind of rom-com thing that made a lot of money apparently. So maybe we're just going, Oh, I don't understand why Indiana Jones and Ghostbusters and Star Wars, they're not doing good. Maybe people are tired of the old well, shit. They want. I've been saying for years stuff. that there's no new ideas in Hollywood. Yeah. Like they, they yeah. really need to get some of these new ideas going. Yeah. You take a chance, but you know, yeah. Well, I right. mean, but then again, look at what was nominated. Sorry, Wayne. Uh, oh, I was going to say, are you looking forward to uh, Beetlejuice? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you, you go ahead. Oh no, no, I was just wondering. Are, are you going to looking? Are you looking forward to Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. No, we'll yeah. see how the trailer. Does. We'll see how it does. But what I was going to say is, they have tried some new things like the creator and some other movies yeah. that are genre movies, and and the traction isn't there. Dune's doing well, isn't it? That's a big one. I yes. saw that. Yeah. Yeah, guys, tell me because I was uh, again. Mitch and I were talking this afternoon. I I wish I could explain why I have this indifference. I still haven't seen uh, the first new Dune movie, but well, please, you guys like them. Like, and I, 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 I it better than the Lynch movie, but go ahead. I saw the Lynch movie in theaters when it came out, and at the time I was like, what in the hell is this all about? It's like a acid trip Star Wars movie. It was not the same type of science fiction, but this new one is very artsy. And what I, that, I mean, it's got a lot of cinematography, beautiful sets, beautiful costume design, all that stuff. So aesthetically, it's amazing. But as I told Ordway when we reviewed it, I said, David Lynch does the same story in about two and a half, I don't know what, three hours, whatever the version you watch. This movie took two movies and all together it's like five or six hours maybe if you put the whole thing together. I'm going to go, it's, it seems bloated. You know what I mean? It's almost too big. It, I don't know. Maybe I, the I people who are going to see it now didn't, aren't going to see the Lynch movie. The young people. I saw it. I, I heard some some reviews on it and and saying, "Oh, this is this generation Star Wars." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Oh, good. At least it's going to be better than the first one." Because I found that one to be slow as molasses, right? right? Yeah. So it's yeah. There's pretty people to look at in it, and, uh, unless you you make them bald and pasty for some reason. Yeah. But but. Going into this one, I, I had some high hopes. I'm like, oh, at least it's going to be better than the first one. There are some long and lingering shots of people just looking at the desert. And I'm like, you know, what What am I? There's brooding. There's there's melancholy. There's just like staring. I'm like, you could have cut like an hour out of this movie with just all the yeah. all the all the looking into the desert, all the all the veils that you're it was artistic. At. Do they were looking at it so us you know no but then i read an interview with with a director that said oh you could say so much without dialogue like, <laughs> yeah but then but that'll 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 get you in 30 seconds why do you keep staying on the same thing for like an hour what what's what's that all about there was not and a lot they of also cut stuff out of the book so what? they didn't let their stuff that's been cut out of the book that didn't even make it to the screen in the new in the new version way yeah because honestly, to answer Mitch, um, I remember the knock on the Lin David Lynch movie was they cut out a lot of stuff and they were foolish to try and tell this large story in two and a half hours. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know what the original uh, director's cut, how long that was. But regardless that, and especially if you also include the, uh, the next book, Dune, Dune Messiah, that it's mm -hmm. uh you know that this actually does deserve to have the three movie treatment to really tell a fuller story. Wayne, do you remember the Sci-Fi Channel Canadian uh yeah. TV movies? Yeah, and I just watched it recently. William and, uh, and, uh, Hurt. Yeah, who uh, was? William, William Hurt. William Hurt. Okay. And uh, James McAvoy. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. He was uh they adapted Dune, Dune Messiah, and Children of Dune. Yeah. Into uh, two miniseries, yeah, and yeah, not too bad because there's stuff like from Dune, Chani and uh, Paul had a kid that was killed. Also, um, Paul's sister was born, so there's at least several years because it's Paul's sister 
that kills the Baron Harkonnen. So um, there's a lot of no finish your thought, Wayne. Oh, oh yeah, no, there's 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 stuff that is missing. You're right. The the long shots of like Lawrence of Arabia looking at the yeah. sand dunes could be taken out. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of well, that's, worm, what, that's what James Bond said. better in a um, Lynch movie when they're riding. You had that Toto music with the electric guitar. It was like, yeah, they're riding big oh, ass no. worms. Now they look like they were catching a subway train. They were just like riding these things going across. I was like, Whoa. well, that brought up a question too, because again, it's spoilers. So they make a big deal about how to how to attract the worm, how to get on the worm, how to ride the worm. All yeah, of that is uh, euphemisms, but. They, and then they have these caravans where they travel to the south and like there's a whole village on these worms, right? And I'm thinking, this is all great. How do they get off that thing? Like, because <laughs> they made such a big deal of getting on it and, and it's a big deal to get on one and yeah, ride man. one. And how do you get off it? The, the, you know, like, does everybody die? Everybody jump off at the same time? Like, I want to know how that happens Dude, or else everybody's well going to die. No. <laughs> you want to talk about moving caravans? The new Walking Dead show, uh, whoever lives or whatever it's called, those who survive. I don't know what the hell it's called. Dr. No. Anyway, they had a group of people that have a moving caravan. Like, it's going like two miles an hour. Like, there's a SUV, there's a camper, there's Jeeps, there's horses, and they just keep walking down this road. And it's like, oh, I want to go talk to the leader. So you kind of, like, walk off the back of a pickup truck, and you kind of walk onto the next truck, and you talk to that person, then you walk back off. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of a cool idea. But what do you do when you there's a bridge out you say okay turn it all around We've got to go back a couple miles and go there it's one of these things that's not well thought out it's like yeah it looks visually cool that they're with the worms and all this stuff but then when mm -hmm. you start going to the practical like huh maybe i'm overthinking this but that doesn't make a lot of sense really why they're doing this but what are we what are we we're arguing about movies with big floating fat guys and you know, worms <laughs> and shit you know so Speaking of which, Johnny, big guys that are no longer with us, do you know who M. Emmett Walsh was, the actor? Yeah, of course. Passed away this week, uh, 88 years old, good actor. He was in Blood, Blade Runner. Blood Simple. Blood, Blood Simple. Simple. That's right. I Black. forgot. And so you mentioned John Wesley Shipp. He played uh, Barry Allen's dad on the Flash TV show mm -hmm. back in the early 90s when that was on. And I, and I, the funniest story I asked uh, Shipp about this at Terrificon and he uh, says, oh, they're doing a scene, and M. Emmett Walsh is the dad. He's sitting at the end of the dining room table, and Ship is talking about his day, and he's going like this with his hands, and Walsh is just looking at him, not saying a word, and then they go, okay, cut, and he goes, are you going to remember all those hand gestures when they block it and they shoot you from a different angle? He's like, what? He's like, you never, ever move your hands around when you're doing exposition on a thing because they're going to have to freaking match every edit so when they go to cut your hands over here now it's over here now it's over here he goes you just sit at the table you don't touch the drinks you don't touch a fork you just look and talk oh and he goes that's how he would be about educating you and, how to do a movie. and it's so yeah. funny because i watched that scene and i could see ship at the end of the day oh and then this and then this and then this. and you see him up. <laughs> so, he was but, great he's hilarious yeah. fletch he's only in that one scene and uh, well, he's in a good movie no one ever saw. It was based on the John Steinbeck novel Cannery Row that had Deborah Winger, Nick Nolte, and this other guy named Frank McRae, this big uh, African American actor. He was in like, uh, oh, was it Forty Eight Hours? He was the bad guy. Yeah, he was Nick Nolte's boss. He was the detective uh, boss. Oh, okay. He had this big bump in the middle of his head, but he was also in a James Bond movie actually too. And now I think about it, the ones with Timothy Dalton. Uh, he wasn't Felix Slider, but he was another guy. He was a th th there was a great cast. If you ever get a chance to see it, I haven't seen it in about thirty years. But Canary yeah, Row, I remember that movie. Was yeah, I saw it back in the day. Yeah. But uh, no, he was a great actor, actor. wonderful yeah, actor. Whatever, good on. No, he was uh, he was terrific. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey managed to interview him before Gilbert passed away, and it was a really good conversation. Yeah, great, great character actor. No, I saw that, and I'm like, and frankly, I thought he had already passed. Sadly. No, and you know what's funny thinking about character actors? We were talking about that this week. Did, you haven't watched that Walking Dead, Ed? I mean, Ed Wayne, have you watched it? Yeah, Those Who Live. Oh, yeah, Those Who Live. That's it. So the main actor is uh, Andrew Lincoln. He plays Rick Grimes, the hero of The Walking Dead. You know, yeah. 
Yeah. So they do they do a scene this week and, and back me up on this, Wayne, where they talk about why did Rick turn and he's not like the rebellious guy he used to be. He's more of a, a an army guy. He felt he, he goes along with the, the, the crowd now and stuff. And he does this crying routine where he says, they took my son. I couldn't remember what Carl looked like. <laughs> and he cries for about, it must have seemed like three minutes. And you're watching it go, somebody wants an Emmy Award. And in the funny, when we started talking about this, it's up there with Alan Alda with the chicken. It was a baby. He killed her own baby. <laughs> it's like Hawkeye. Shut the f- whatever. You got an Emmy for that. By the I, way. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes <laughs> when you look at these actors, it's the subtle well, guest it's... star that comes on and does one and done. Like does Edward Herman was on an episode of Mash once where he played a surgeon who couldn't get the blood off his hands because he was having a breakdown and he just yes. walked in his hands. It's little moments like that. You go, that's a good performance. M. Emmett Walsh, that's a good performance. But the main actor who's on it for eight years, it's like, I want my damn gold trophy for my bookcase. And suddenly they. Yeah, but it's know. not. The, Mitch, it's not the actor. It's, I mean, it might be. Oh, it's the writer. Actually, it might, you're, you might be right because Andrew Lincoln, I would imagine. He's a producer point, on the show. He's a producer on the show. Yeah, yeah. But I do think, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd like, I, I certainly hope Sunita Martin Green uh, is not. You know, I need more. I need more uh, crying. Well, you know, honest, you know, she was great on The Walking Dead. She I was. loved her on The Walking Dead. She was fantastic. We were all, we were all excited here. I was like, oh, it's the writing, man. It's just, I don't know. It's but the other reason why it's writing too is because Diana uh, De- Guerrera. How do you say her name? That plays uh, Dan- D- D- Dana. Dion? Yeah. What she yeah. wrote this episode. So that's why I was thinking maybe that's a little bit going on behind the scenes because they're friends, obviously. They're the stars of the show. They're both producers of the show. Mm-hmm. And yet Rick had this epic monologue for about three minutes. I'm like, I could go out, do my taxes, come back, you know, walk the dog. And he was still crying. I'm like, Rick, suck it up, buddy. Come on. Uh, by the way, uh, here's the image uh, for everyone. If you're thinking about going to Terrificon and you're a Star Trek fan, uh, yeah. here's who's going to be at Terrificon from – the Star Trek universe. So yeah, there's Walter Koenig right there at the top uh, middle, and uh, that's the uh, the Vulcan from uh, Picard season three that so everyone's like. I don't know so, that. I thought she was a Vulcan, but they said she's a Romulan. I'm a huge. Whatever. We'll and find out. New New Uhura from Strange New Worlds and Armin Shimmerman, uh, yep. Quark and the Navista, and uh, yep. of course uh, Andrew Robinson is Garrick. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm you know who got the most I like? think if we play our cards right and we yeah. write a fanfic movie with those that we could we yeah <laughs> we could get it filmed in the course of the weekend and then yeah. you know we can make a whole bunch of YouTube uh money table read table read no, sure. you know what's better it's Trek Watch it's kind of like Gary mm-hmm. Seven you could be Gary Seven we go they they've transported to whatever century we are now 21st century and they're all there but they're in their human disguises trying to blend in to save the galaxy. That's your story right there. And they have to defeat Franco with Batlets. Um, that's fantastic. Ooh. And I only wish. <laughs> okay. um, James says, just heard that Orson Welles was offered the Baron's role in Dune, the Lynch <laughs> Dune. He listened to the offer on the phone, and all he had to say was, the fat guy? And hung up. Oh, well. Yeah, he was too busy doing commercials for Paul Masson Wine. That's right. And, Ernest and Julia for- Gallo. And for for Dark Tower, the game, which I still have, by the way, isn't that fantastic that he did that yeah. commercial? Wine in a box, wasn't that him? Well, yeah. Yeah. well Paul Masson was the yeah. wine. You Paul shall serve no it. wine before it's time. That's yeah. that was the line. Yeah. So. And then we come on the Carson show, do card tricks. Like, what happened here? What's going on? Yeah, but he was doing he was doing magic even in the forties in 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 his prime. He just loved doing magic. <sighs> so, whatever. Uh, anyway, I'm, a, I'm still a big fan. What other uh, Trek stuff happened this week? I saw uh, Anson Mount give us a tour of his trailer. Now that he's on, yes. said the filming episode. It wasn't the nicest trailer. I thought it'd be a little bit more elaborate. But when he showed the toilet, and he said, "This is where the magic happens." I laughed my ass off. But they, he said, "We're just finishing episode seven. So I'm thinking it's only ten episodes. It's March. They'll be done by conceivably." Uh, yeah, conceivably. So you hope, you know, that is one of the questions that I want to ask uh, some of the new people that are on streaming shows where you don't have a network schedule of that imperative 
of to be done quickly. And I wonder how long it takes them to shoot an episode these days. You don't think it's a week like the old shows? No, I think they pro- if they were smart, make yeah. it you know at least uh, ten to ten, ten days to two weeks. I yeah. don't know. I really don't know. You did hear there's a strike coming. I've heard rumors that there's a yeah, strike yeah. Uh, with the behind the scenes folks, the, your key grips, your uh, electricians, yep. and all that. Well, stuff. Well, so. I, I I hear you, and I hope that the studios are smart enough to realize the pain that yeah. they are still going through this year. I mean, this is, for a lack of better description, this is the healing year. And I don't mean that from an emotional standpoint. I mean, like, physically healing because yeah. they got to they gotta catch up. And um, and it re- this year really is a wash. And oh, if, yeah. any, if we're going to get back to any sense of normalcy, it's going to be in 2025. Or so, normalcy. You know, they even have all the Spider-Man movies coming out every Monday. Sony's doing that with you know the Garfield, the Maguires, and the Holland movie. And I'm like, why are they doing that? Then I'm thinking they don't really have a lot of new stuff in the the till to put out there, so they're just recycling. Uh, Fox is re-releasing the Phantom Menace for the 25th anniversary. I go, did anyone really want to see that? Really, I don't think so. But they're bringing that back in May because they probably don't have a lot of movies to fill the theaters with. Maybe that's why Ghostbusters is out earlier than and, I thought. Well, Sony and- has only uh, Venom. Of the, for this no, year. they got that Spider-Man cartoon they're still holding on to, right? Yeah. And um, the, yeah, Hunter, think... the new James Bond guy, supposedly. Yeah, we'll Aaron. see. Yeah, was, we'll... That, was that definitively offered or just still rumor? As far as Bond? Yeah. I rumor. Think it's a rumor, yeah, but they were like going full guns this week. I was, oh, look. Aaron. Well, that's that's why I, I cried laughing about uh, The Onion having the article that Wallace Shawn is being considered as the new James I Bond. I saw that. Yeah. It's like, that's fantastic. Exactly. You know, that'd be great. Be you know, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. They should have, he should have posed with the gun, like the tux, the tux pose with the gun in his hand. So, but yeah, and it's what too bad. Uh, Andre's not alive. Cause then he could play the updated version of jaws. Or he could be Blofeld. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't think, uh, yeah, maybe I could see him as jaws. I don't know about Blofeld, though. You know what? That's another thing, though. Do you think James Bond is still relevant to younger audiences? They don't care. I mean, they got Mission Impossible. They'd probably go see Tom Cruise. Probably know him more than James Bond nowadays. James asked, did the rule about Star Trek fan films go away? Last I heard, they didn't allow anyone connected to the actual show to participate. Um, Yeah, I I know that I've seen some new Star Trek um, fan films. They seem to be adhering to the rules. They're only, you know, 10 to 15 minutes long. Um, I don't know of a current fan film that has used uh, a show participant. The last time I remember anything like that, well, there have been uh, examples in the past, but I know Rob Burnett was making uh, the Axanar movie, and they got Gary Graham to reprise his character of Solovar, the the Vulcan from Enterprise, and and they shot that one scene. But yeah, I, I I imagine that that they haven't changed that rule uh, at all because they're they're you know again I think they're ridiculous. Meanwhile, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the more recent Star Wars fan films, but Christ, I saw one that was an hour long. Yeah, and I, and I can't remember the name. Do you remember the name of it, Mitch? Yeah, I sent you guys one about a month ago. The X Wing guys, the X Wing fighters, like, yeah, 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 with the Empire. I thought it was great. Check the like effects wise as well. You know? I was really impressed. I thought it was terrific. And then Dave Cullen, who is a YouTuber that I watch with some frequency, he pointed out a bunch of shorter uh, Star Wars fan films that were really well made. So well, Lucas did you was see, always, speaking uh, of Star uh, Wars, the, uh, Star they Wars. just greenlit the uh, Patty Jenkins movie again, the X-Wing Squadron. Yes. They're going to bring that back out. Yeah, Rogue Rogue Squadron. Squadron. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Wayne, you're right. Go ahead and say that again, because I heard. Oh you yeah, always- uh, George Lucas was always uh, uh, allowed the fans to make whatever movie they wanted. Well, and yeah. further would uh, make available stock footage and the scores, so you could make it as authentic as you chose to make it. And, I still uh, think one of the best is Troopers. Yeah, it is. Just like the cops episode. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> they go to the domestic ex domestic uh, uh Uncle Owen on Peru, yeah. Kevin, that's yeah. Kevin Rubio. Kevin Rubio is a cool guy. He's on uh, a lot of social media stuff. Has, he made I, I haven't I haven't watched if it's out there, and I know it's coming in June, so I would assume there's some sort of trailer. I haven't watched the Al the Acolyte uh trailer yeah, yet. It's, it's based on the High Republic, which is the stuff Charles Soule was writing about. It's about a hundred and something years before our Star Wars with Obi Wan Kenobi and well, Anakin and all that. So. Yeah, Charles Soule was writing about it, but it was from the video games way before then. Right? No, that was the uh, Tales of the Old Republic, which was thousands of years. This is the High Republic, which is only a hundred years. So it's the know. same Jedi stuff, but it's not as old and as the, the other. The trailer one. is out. The trailer yeah. is out. Yeah. And yeah. Charles Soule also uh, going to be a terrific guy. There you go. And Everybody. one of the writers of Daredevil. Indeed, Somewhere. he was. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, I, I asked everyone to at least sample Invincible lately, season two, Amazon. I man, what a great show! What and also, by the way, real fast, a uh, more proof that you can still do good superhero storytelling if you have the writing. So, mm -hmm. as frustrated as we are with Madam Web and the meh Marvel movies and meh DC movies, it's like. Uh, get better writers. It's that simple, kids. Get better writers. Because yeah, I think this season, this season of Invincible, I think has been fantastic. Yeah. Right, I wonder when the boys it. comes back. The boys season four, I think. Yeah, that should be back in the summer, I guess. Well, I haven't heard any any uh, dates. And again, I don't know how the strikes impacted their production. But yeah. I, sure, I, regardless, I know they're definitely making another season. So you know, are they going to do way, another but, sequel of the uh, of the uh, the the nine zero two one zero version of the Gen boys? V? Yeah, Gen, Gen V. v. Yeah. I hope so. That was a great man. I thought that was an excellent show, and it really that really impressed me as being as as vital as uh, the main boys show. I think. Uh, what else is out there? I think Amazon's been doing well with their um, comic books adaptations. Yep. Like especially with the boys and with Invincible. Yeah. No, again, it's you know, a good writing. Yeah. You know, Evan, Evan or uh uh not Evan, um Seth Rogan gives a shit about these things having quality. I mean, we saw it with Preacher as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he 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 knows how to uh respect uh, the the original properties. And I would say the same thing, you know, uh, with uh what uh, what Kirkman's doing with Invincible? It's terrific. I so, think he made a lot of money with that last Turtles picture too. That was Seth Rogen, wasn't it? Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah, he produced it, and I don't know if he did voices on it, but I noticed in the latest, and it's the episode that dropped today of Invincible. Uh, Seth uh, played an alien uh, that was uh, that was yes, yeah, Alan the alien exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's friends with uh, Mark. And they have a very funny conversation and stuff. It was good. When does Doctor Who stand up? Soon? I don't know, but uh, Mike Jones says the new trailer dropped today. I didn't know oh, that. Oh, I thought it was about May or something. I thought it was definitely soon. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think it is know. coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and James agrees that Seth is great as Alan. Absolutely. Oh, and James says that uh, Doctor Who's back in May. Okay. So there you go. Well, that'll be good then. Right in the midst of uh, Discovery. We'll have Doctor Who to compare to. Is All well. Mankind over? Is that done? That wrap up for All Mankind? Season I, four? Think, I think they're making another season. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, Doctor Who is set for May 11th. May 11th. All right. Very cool. Rudy says the trailer looked fun. Is, okay. We'll what see. Is, oh, Aliens. I saw a trailer for a new Aliens movie yes. coming out on August 16th, the same weekend as Terrificon at the Mohegan Sun. So I won't be seeing that weekend. But the thing of it is, I don't. Uh, what's his name is producing it, but I don't think it has anything to Ridley do with Scott those other. It's just producing yeah, it, and it is. Has... Uh, it is linked in with the other movies. The ones he made, the Prometheus and that other weird thing. It'll okay. it'll all fit into the oh, universe. Okay, I hope so because it was like, what is going on with these alien movies? You know, uh, Paul, James Paul Reiser just wrote um, a Marvel comic, a What If Alien? What if his character had lived? Remember in Aliens, he was the guy, the corporate weasel guy that yeah, yeah. 
No. I didn't know that anybody was asking that burning question, but apparently <laughs> they did because I saw it at the start. What if whatever his name was lived? I'm like, okay, I guess I want to know. Uh, James James says Stephen Moffat uh, is also writing an episode of Doctor Who, which is fantastic. Wow. Um, you know, Mario asks if he needs to watch old Doctor Who before he watches the new season. No, no I really no. don't think so. No. Um, especially what I would watch is that. Um, first uh special with the new doctor to yeah. introduce yeah. the character but other than that you'll be fine you'll be fine so mike says the new alien uh trailer looks fantastic very scary very cool oh john speaking of old science fiction that needs to come up shouldn't you be talking about salvage i'm glad you reminded me mitch because yeah i was uh i i salvage was a 1979 ironically uh produced by harv bennett star trek producer of the original cast uh, movies, but it's a great, uh, if you, it, cause you might remember the more recent movie that, um, Oh God, uh, what's his face? Uh, Billy Bob Thornton made it called the astronaut farmer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's similar in that Andy Griffith plays, uh, a junkyard, uh, dealer that is constantly going out on salvage missions to find things. And he decides he wants to build his own rocket to go to the moon and grab all the NASA stuff that was left on the moon. Yeah. And um, and it's for a TV 1979 movie, the production values are definitely 1979 television. It's a great idea. It's a lot of fun. He hires an astronaut who is played by, and I forget the actor's name, but it's the dad from Silver Spoons about Joel, five years before Joel, Silver Spoons. Joel, not Joel Gray, Joel Silver. Joel something. No, okay. Joel Silver's the producer. Joel Higgins, I want to say. Joel Higgins. I know it's Joel. <laughs> well, there you go. He's he's the astronaut. I, I remember I was mad at him because he would get to hang out with Aaron Gray all the time. Aaron yeah. Gray, who represents many of the talent that you'll see at. Terrific. Time. But anyway. Uh, it's Joel Higgins. Great. Joel it Higgins. Joel Higgins. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. I thought Not to be confused with Joel uh, Fleischman on Northern Exposure, which was an right. earlier tangent. But it's but anyway, I, Salvage One, John. May I interrupt? Wasn't that the show where I remember this physics lesson? And the guy says, Where NASA goes straight up to the moon, we're gonna go this way, like at a uh, you know, at an angle. And I always thought, Was that really gonna work? Does it can you really go into space by well, going on an angle? But also, yeah, because you go right off the edge of the earth and it's easier to get into orbit that way because the earth is flat. You could do that, right? He so. explains he explains his propulsion theory, yeah. and um, I I really can't do it. I it might be as simple as just a different trajectory. Well, that, yeah, I always remember, like, does that work? Because I mean, think about it. If you just go on an angle, eventually you're going to leave. But I I don't know. Maybe I don't know that it work. was that it was an acceleration that was slower than NASA's <laughs> blast off. And, uh, and then they have a woman on the show that uh, she's one of the co-leads, and she's a fuel expert, and she has developed a, a fuel that, uh, you know, they only need 1,000 gallons as opposed to 100,000 gallons yeah. or whatever it was for the Saturn V uh, missions. But, yeah, it's it was fun. It's a fun little show. And, I mean, it was they, a reusable rocket, wasn't it? He got to come back like the space shuttle. He got to land, which is yeah, the whole or, thing they're doing now with SpaceX. I go. Hey, screw you, man. Andy Griffith figured this shit out 50 years ago, man. You know, come on. But I love, that Harv, I, I love that Harv Bennett, who produced, you know, the uh, second from Wrath of Khan through um, Star Trek VI. Yeah. He produced all those movies. And yeah, he did it before all that in 1979. He made Salvage. And he was a big $6 million man, bionic woman, uh, writer, producer as well. And he made V, did he? Yes. No, Kenneth Johnson, Johnson did. Kenneth John, not Harv Bennett. Okay. So maybe he made no, Twister tapes. Maybe that was him. Well, that was that was early Roddenberry. That was seventies Roddenberry. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you're curious about Salvage, uh, the pilot is great. The the twenty episodes they made afterwards, not so much. But there was another, at least one more, where they go back into space and they have mm -hmm. to rescue a, a NASA mission that goes wrong. Um. Yeah, I thought it was fun. And you really said the effects aren't that cheesy for the seventies. Yeah, like, I mean, you got to you got to you got to accept yeah. that yeah. level of bad science or special effects. Or it's time, fine. Yeah, 
but it's cool, and I, I, I just love. Yeah, I mean, they hacked they hacked into uh, a major computer for their guidance, uh, the stuff they needed for guidance and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it's just it's it's just really funny watching these guys in a junkyard build a spaceship and manage to fly it to the moon and back and everything. It's fun. So maybe they should redo that. Maybe they should reboot that. Well, again, you, it was similar in the Astronaut Farmer, that that Billy Bob movie. Uh, it was a little too sentimental in, in in its way. That I I prefer Salvage. I thought it was funnier. So. You know what and needs to be rebooted? A Flash Gordon comic. Who would be doing such a thing? Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Is there some Flash Gordon book that you're acquainted with? The, yeah, Flash Gordon comes out in November from uh, Paper Cuts and, and Bad Cave. So uh, Art Balthazar and I are working on that. Yes, true story. Okay, okay whoever's uh, please, uh, whoever's scribbling or making whatever noise that is, please stop. Thank you. Um, there you go. So anyway, uh, but no, I'm excited for uh, both uh, your parody of Flash Gordon that you and Artie are doing. Oh, is it a parody? Oh, well, it's a young it's real Flash Gordon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's you know what I mean, and uh, what I'm saying is I hope that there's also a straight up adventure Flash Gordon proper project happening at Mad Gave as well. I know they're doing uh, Dick Tracy, and I'm yeah. actually next week on Word Balloon. I'm going to have Alex Segura on uh, one of the writers, and later after that, I'll have Mike Marisi on the other writer. I see so, a lot of ads yeah. for that popping up in my feeds, like Dick Tracy variant cover. So who's who's producing that? Is that uh, Dynamite? No, Matt Cave. Oh, Matt, Matt. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Wow. Matt Cave, Matt Cave has licenses. Yeah. Huh. Uh, oh, Mike Jones also. You're correct. Uh, Harv uh, Bennett also did Time Tracks. Time Tracks. Yes. And uh, he did uh, Time Cop uh, as or one of. Oh, I see. So he did Time Tracks, one of 57 Time Cop like yeah. television shows of the nights. Yeah, Time Tracks was one of those first run syndication shows. Of the 90s. and Wasn't uh, that with uh, BJ and the Bear Guy? Or am I thinking of the Shatner one? Trek, Trek, Greg yeah, Evans. That's Trek Wars. Wars. Tech Wars. Yeah, that's that's Wars. Tech Wars. Tech Wars, Wars yeah. yeah. Speaking of Mr. Shatner, it's his birthday today. He's 93, right? Yeah, 93. That's right. And he announced he's going to Antarctica at Christmas time. And I told my wife, let's go. She goes, why? I go, because you know there's not going to be any safer trip to Antarctica than that one. Because there's no way in hell they're going to have Captain Kirk die on a trip to Antarctica in uh, Christmas time. She's Why? Like, yeah. He's already been to space. Why go to Antarctica? Like, that, because it's the there. And they're paying him money. That's why. Yeah, but my reason is why. Payment. He's already gone to space. Because uh, wh wh why Antarctica? Where's That's your thrill of adventure, man? It's done. He went to space. He doesn't have to have any more thrill and adventures on Earth. Everything else has uh, to take place. Sponsored by the company that's sending him to Antarctica. <laughs> they're a big payer of Johnny's money so be quiet anyway yeah antarctica where's it go captain kirk way to go and he's got a new movie out in theaters you can call me bill which That's was right. a crowdfunded thing which is i yeah, don't even know how that works it's that company legion m who actually have made a handful of movies and um i and forgive the editorial here but you know it's like hey uh, jump in and invest in these movies and you'll be able to participate in the profits. I think we're all still waiting for the profits. Oh, you know, is it kind of yeah, shady? Well, well, oh. And it's funny because Shatner, Shatner's on the latest Inglorious Treks um, podcast episode, and it's a panel. It's a panel from GalaxyCon, and he said it's going to open in four hundred theaters. But this, sadly, especially for an independent movie, is one of the worst times to try and be in movie theaters. And and yeah, I mean it's and, but also unfortunately, because of the strikes, there aren't a lot of I guess if you're an independent producer and trying to get a movie bought by one of the streamers, mm -hmm. this is also a bad time because they're all kind of seeing the lack of profit in in the streamers themselves as businesses. So they're being a lot choosier in terms of what they what they acquire rather than what they produce themselves. So yeah, he was. I, I found that very candid on Shatner's part to go into all that detail. Well, you know that yeah. third part Trek series we watched, the history of Trek, and then there's some other stuff that's out there on Amazon. Seems to have a lot of these shows. Are 
who who's paying for this? Was that the History Channel? I mean, there's got to be money behind some yeah. of these multi episode projects here. I mean, yeah, yeah, if you if you haven't watched it, the center seat, yeah, is this great. I believe 10 part uh, history of Star Trek. And my buddy Brian Vokweiss was the creative producer behind it, but he cut the deal initially with the History Channel. Mm -hmm. And they um they also um they um they didn't show all the episodes on the History Channel proper when it was originally running. And then and now it's on a, it, it's on Amazon, so you can watch them all there. Um, but yeah, he, uh, it, it was, it was backed by the history channel. He had made a couple other, uh, Star Trek, uh, documentaries that did end up running on the history channel, but you know, he's also the guy that made the toys that made us the movies that yep. made yep. us and those fantastic shows. Those are, so, yeah, those are really good. I thought those were Netflix good. produced. Well, or, again, yes, they were, but, but Brian, they started with Brian's company, the Nacelle company named oh. for the Nacelles of uh, Star Trek. Yeah, 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 Brian's great. And I love uh, seriously. Uh, Brian's in the midst of a big animation and Oni uh, project. Oni's making the comics, and it's all these uh, '80s and '90s uh, comic and animation properties, like Bikers from Mars. Oh no, yeah, yeah, Biker, yeah. Mi Biker Mice from Mars, whatever it's it was. Biker called. Mice, yeah, Biker Mice yeah. from Mars. Yeah, and yeah, and he's like, uh, there's like a handful of them, and he's tying them all together in this like universe, and he got the rights to do this and he and he's doing it both as animation as and comics oh, and wow. uh, he's thrilled about it. he's very excited and he's See, making we were, choice we were, we were just talking about space ghost because that's one of the other shows i'm on mitch and ed's excellent adventures it'll be on tomorrow we talk about space ghost the original 60s cartoon not the coast to coast thing but we do talk about that sure. there are so many good ips out there and i talked to you about johnny quest a couple weeks ago too that when yeah. you sit there and you go, oh, they're making another Ghostbusters. Oh, they're making another King Kong Godzilla, which we're going to see Thursday. But at, sometimes you go, there's a lot of good stuff that's still sitting in the, the the waste bin that they've thrown away and they haven't touched in years. Now you just mentioned Biker Mike's from Mars. I don't know if it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, but Transformers, Teenage Turtles, those all these other shows, Thundercats, everything seems to have a revival lately. Why aren't they, you know, uh, uh, Herculoids, Johnny Quest? I mean, it's just sitting out there. Somebody go grab that stuff and actually well, bring it not back. Just sitting out there, they're owned by Warner Brothers. Yeah, well, the Warner Brothers didn't even do anything with, you know, the stuff they own lately, other than just throwing it out. You know. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, why nothing's happening with it. Yeah, it's a shame. I don't know. No, well, I, I hear you. Well, again, uh, older IPs like Doc Savage and the Shadow. Yeah. You know, they they sit. Uh, unused for decades and now good lord find somebody under our age yeah. that even gives a damn about doc savage or the shadow no, and, and it's yeah. a shame because they're good ideas or or the mismanagement of john carter i mean yeah, what, a, that was a disaster. what a missed opportunity for and there's a whole book about why they screw why disney screwed that up and, it, and part of, book. I read it. I forgot what it's called, but I read oh, was it because of the name change when they first got of Mars yeah. out of the title? Yeah, I was like, because yeah, the they were doing focus groups. Yeah. And it's like, oh no, Mar Mars is a negative. Don't call it John Carter from Mars. And it's, it's like, a negative? What the yeah, hell? well, because uh, they made an, an animated movie, Mars Needs Moms, and it bombed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Burke Breath is a, a so blue county guy. Yeah. So that's why they're like, well, that bomb. So anything with Mars must suck. And it's like, that's what? the reason why they changed the title because of the other movie bomb. Really? Wow. I was wondering that because it's like Tarzan of the apes. It was like John Carter of Mars. That was like part of the title. Sure. And to take it out. Suddenly it's like Jack Carter, the comedian. He's it's got a movie not, about being in space. It, and then the irony, it's not. <laughs> thank you, Artie. Yoko chips of Mars. Right. Um, no, the irony was too that you know the original source material is these great Edgar Rice Burroughs stories yeah. from a hundred years ago, even more like early nineteen hundreds. I want to say maybe even pre Tarzan, but regardless, um, the other knock on the John Carter movie was, well, this looks a lot like um, the second Star Wars prequel movie, Attack of the Clones, and it's like, well, yeah, because Attack of the Clones lifted. Those gladiator scenes from goddamn John <laughs> Carter. Oh, you know, I mean, it's like, all right, there you go. And again, 
because you sit with an IP and you don't do anything with it for decades. And, you know, yeah, things inspired by the original are like, well, that's Star Wars did it first. It's like, well, yeah, technically, I suppose, from a, movie, a new movie standpoint. But no, you're wrong. <laughs> it started with John Carter. So, yeah, what are you going to do? I don't know. Yeah, Mike, you know, exactly, Mike. John Carter, Warlord of Mars. Absolutely. Warlord of Mars. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the first book was a princess uh, from a princess of Mars, and that was Deja, Deja Thoris, who, who man, Dynamite, like, made a meal. Oh, they love that. Oh, yeah. oh my I God. Love I mean, just, it's sci-fi Vampirella, essentially. I was going to say, she's like the Vampirella of Mars. Every time I go to the store, I go, what's this now? Oh, wow. Ooh. Tons of sexy covers of Deja Thoris. Absolutely, man. I keep picking oh, yeah. on Barucci. I'm like, will you come on the show? Because he'll he ends up ends up watching nine times out of ten when I have a, a, a comic creator on. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, Nick, I appreciate you being in the chat, but come on the goddamn show. So we're I'll tell we're, you what, Nick, Nick employs this beautiful artist named uh, Lucio Paroli. I think that's how his name, Parolo. Him and his wife, uh, uh I can't think of her Carla. name. Carla. Carla. Carla Cohen, is that her name? Mm -hmm. My God, the man does such beautiful work for Vampirella, cover, anything. You see it. He does DC stuff, too, but you can tell it a mile away. It's all painted. It's really nice. He's going to be at this uh, Lake Como Art Festival I'm going to in May in Italy. So I want to go talk to that guy. because Oh, you're definitely yeah. going? Yeah, I already got my, my tickets. Wow. So, yeah. You want to come yeah. with me? Yeah. Come on, let's go. You and me. Road trip. You could talk Italian more than I can. Gicuro thinks uh, Lucas lifted the word Sith from the uh, John Carter Barsoom books. I don't oh, know. Might have, I don't know. Well, we were talking today. Everyone was going, he stole uh, Star Wars as a ripoff of Dune. I go, yeah, but nobody cares. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, yeah. Everything's a ripoff of everything. Like Swiss Family Robinson, the comic book, before Lost in Space came out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this, yeah, yeah. So go figure that out. I saw this at a bookstore, and I was like, "Wait, is that Lost in Space?" They go, "No, this came out a year before." I go, "Came out Wait, before." How is that possible? Hollywood doesn't steal ideas. Oh no, never. <laughs> yeah, and especially <laughs> especially given that Gold Key was an LA comic book company. Oh really? Know? Oh absolutely. Yeah. All those all those Tim Dell and Tam. Tim and Tam Robinson. That's the name of the people. Same back there. Yep. 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 No, um, there's the history of Dell, Western, and Gold Key. Uh, a lot of their interior artists, especially when they had Disney and Anna Barbera licenses and stuff, they had the original animators making yeah. extra money making the comics and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was, uh, you know, they took advantage of being on the West Coast and they'd go to get these great uh, artists. And those painted, like the one, the cover you just showed, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those painted covers are. I mean, they're epic. Those gold key. I covers. asked Ordway about that because that most of these gold key, they're westerns, and you know all the, the riflemen, all this. They're painted Lone Ranger, especially. I got a couple beautiful mm -hmm. Lone Ranger covers, and I said, Jerry, were they paying these guys a lot? He goes, You yeah, know, these are commercial artists. They would bang that stuff out in a couple of days, just like Alex Ross is like the biggest thing because everyone's like, Oh wow, look what he does. These back then, there was a lot more people like Alex Ross. They were doing this all the time for cigarette ads soda ads you know all that stuff they didn't have a lot of photography or photoshop it was right. all painted stuff so yeah that's why it's so are, to see that nowadays the gold the gold key star trek covers yeah are, they, i mean they're not very accurate for what no. was happening in the 60s show who cares they were just yeah. great uh science fiction I covers. Thought, yeah exactly well remember all those novels in the 70s when paperback books were the big deal when you go to when a newsstand and they have yeah. literally shelves of paperback books like other than Conan and the Barbarian, which had great Boris and uh, Frazetta covers, but there would be weird science fiction from like Tor, which was a publisher that you don't, I think they're long gone now, but No, they're still around. Tor, Tor, Tor oh, really? Because I remember Tor, buying books and be like who is this publisher? But they would do like adventure stories like Indiana Jones, yeah. the Executioner, the Destroyer, all those men's you know, violent death yeah, stories. Yeah, men's adventure. adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they had tons of them, and the guy that did all the, uh, the uh, docs had with James, James, Bama. James Bama. Yeah, yeah. Bama. That's or, or yeah, 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 yeah. That guy was fantastic too. Bob Larkin was the guy that did a lot of the Marvel stuff. He's still with us too. 
So. John Berkeley did a lot of the science fiction uh, covers. Yeah. For the well, paperbacks. That's... Michael, John uh, Berkeley and uh, Michael Whalen would be another artist you'd recognize. Michael Whalen, I remember that name, yeah. So that's that's why as and and don't get me wrong, the episodes themselves, especially in the second season, were hit or miss. But I really appreciated the uh design of Space 1999. Yeah. Because it looked like one of those 70s sci-fi covers come to life. And also we were talking this afternoon, Wayne dropped some great images from uh the Jerry Anderson show UFO. And uh that really for a show that was made in 1970 or whatever it was, early 70s, if not 1970 itself, man, it looked like the future. It really looked mm -hmm. like the future. They did a great job on that show. And, and I, as I said in the chat, I'm like, I kind of wish they had stuck with, with UFO rather than Space 1999 because I think it was a, I think it was a superior show, frankly. I really do. Mm -hmm. So there you go, man. Oh, that's funny. Um, and G. Carrojo is correct. Very psychedelic covers from people like Richard Powers. And yes, Jeffrey Catherine Jones when he was just Jeffrey Jones. Absolutely, man. Oh, oh really? He did paperback covers and stuff? Oh, I didn't know that. Or did they yeah, all, all four of the studio guys did as much in fantasy and sci-fi novels as they yeah. did in comics. So, yeah. Yeah, Kaluta and... Uh, Kaluta and uh, uh, Gary Smith and there's the other guy. Right. Right, Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson, yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's a book yeah. that you can never find about the their, studio. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's very expensive. And then the second. Well, yeah, it was the, that was their original portfolio. Yeah. Uh, that they they put out and yeah made it made them a ton of money. No, our um, uh, uh this East Coast um filmmaker made a really great documentary, and I sent it to Mitch. Uh, Better things about uh jeffrey jones i've seen that and, yeah. and um and there's a lot of stuff about the studio in in that documentary and i know that she also intended and maybe she still does but she did a lot of interview footage with kaluta bernie i think had passed away before yeah, Louise uh, is on that too. yeah i watched yeah. it oh, yeah. it was on uh i think it was on amazon because you told me about it i went and found it or maybe Netflix. Yeah, it's a really great documentary. They're all on there. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah. But I'm saying beyond the movie that she that she's already made, she had talked about she wanted to do subsequent movies focusing on Kaluta and Wrightson and Windsor Smith. So, mm -hmm. and I know she like Barry's not in the uh, Jeffrey Jones movie, but Kaluta and um, and like you said, a Weezy's in it because yeah. she was married. She was Wheezy Jones before she was Wheezy Simonson. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, uh, no, pretty cool. Uh, yes, here's her name. Yes, thank you, G. Caro. And uh, like I said, she's been on Word Balloon. Maria Paz Cabardo. Absolutely. Oh, okay. oh it came out before Wrights had passed. Well, I don't remember I don't remember Bernie being in the movie. I could be wrong. But I don't remember Bernie being in the movie. Speaking of comic creators, tonight's the Segway show. What are your reactions to Disney putting uh, Steve Ditko into their Legends of... Oh, I'm so Disney. glad you brought that up, Mitch. Oh, yes. I, you know, John, I, I kind of direct a lot of this stuff through my mental abilities here. so <laughs> And I don't have notes, too. It's called Clean Living in a Pure Heart. Yeah, you, got a good, you know, you still got a good brain. I have to take... No, uh, well, that short-term yeah, memory yeah, goes... Yeah, you got to start stuff. taking that fish guts uh, thing. That's yeah, 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 yeah. So what do you think of that, Johnny? Would Steve Dicko himself be upset by getting an accolade? Well, I think I think he would uh, treat it with contempt, given his whole <laughs> anti-position regarding uh, fame and the cult of personality yeah. and all that stuff. But, Mitch, there was an interesting wrinkle that you told me about this afternoon. So feel yeah. free to keep talking about it. And I also We'll see what everybody Disney, else thinks of that. Disney did a press release, obviously. They said these are the inductees, and in, they do this D23 on August, which is like their comic oh. convention they do out in uh, California, and they have certain people that have contributed over the years to movies and TV and animation and such. So Harrison Ford is going to be one of the inductees into their Hall of Fame, and they said on the comic side, Steve Ditko would be put into this whatever it is. I don't know if it's yeah, an actual icons. movie. Disney Disney icons. Disney icons, icons, that's it. Yeah, legends, icons, whatever. So they announced it, and then Mark Dicko is the nephew of the late Steve Dicko, and 
he posted, you know, you know, my family's, you know, honored by this and on and on. And thank you very much. It's a great thing that my uncle Steve is recognized for his contributions to Dr. Strange and to Spider-Man and all the other things he's done. And then there was an immediate, uh, you know, the internet, that's what it's for. It's for people to yell about stuff that nobody really wants to hear from them, but they did. And they were like, oh, Steve would have thrown it in there. This is a total disgrace. He's, this is everything against him, the antithesis of what he was about and his Ayn Rand philosophy and objectivism. And it went on and on and on. But I was telling you, for the family that might not have shared his same beliefs, it's a nice recognition because for so long, Steve Ditko was in the shadow of Stan Lee. And a lot of people did not know of his contributions to comics and Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. So the fact that Disney has recognized that just like bill finger with the batman and bob mm -hmm. it's like hey everybody we're not talking about the man's personal beliefs we're just saying we know he existed we know look what he did look we're still making money off of this that's not why they did it but it's like let's recognize the talent that was sure him. that's all but you don't well, need to put jack kirby like that it's, uh, burning coming at the door with torches like how dare you disgrace the honor of team Day? no one said that Put your pants on and calm the F down, will you? Calm down. We're just why, talking about... Wait, why do they have their pants off? What's happening? I don't know. That's, the internet no, off pants no off. he's right. That's that's what normally happens with the internet like, outrage people. They're usually go. pants. Yes. Yeah. The man said, thank you for recognizing my, my uncle's yeah. contributions. We're no, proud I, of him. I mean, we are proud of what he did. Thank my, you. My reflex was much like the haters in terms of... And G. Carrojo, for that matter, who I don't think is a hater... But basically is saying, yeah, I'm sure people wouldn't care. Hey, look who's showing up, ladies and gentlemen. The new writer of X-Men. Where is she? Gail Simone. Wait a minute. What's the there thing with go. the man? Everybody's on it tonight. Hello, Gail. <laughs> Gail. Yeah, who's Gail. often been invited to Terrificon, Connecticut's Terrific Comic Con at the Mohegan Sun. Many a times I've talked to her, her husband. I think Brian is his name. I believe no, I've Scott. Scott is Gail Simone. Scott. I don't know. Who's Brian somebody's guy. husband. He's one of my Whatever. favorite. Both one of two of my favorite people. But anyway, college. that's the that's internet you. got upset, like it does, like a little baby in the corner when it doesn't have its nappy or its bottle, it starts to cry. So yeah, <laughs> she puts you in your place. There you go. She always puts me in my place. Oh, Brian! Brian no, is her French boyfriend. <laughs> Wow. Hey, you know, she, in New York, they just passed a law that you can now uh, commit adultery and not get charged with it. And my wife's like, wait, was that ever on the books? Apparently, you could have gone to jail for like up to four months if you got convicted of adultery in New York City. I'm like, what? What pure didn't thought of this idea? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to bother you uh, because I know it's like, I know you were just in South by Southwest. But with all this news, I hope you'll come back to Word Balloon. I know you don't like podcasts, but please come back to Word Balloon. This is a podcast. She made a she made a big rant on Facebook about uh you know you know podcasts. I don't like to do it, and I respect that. But you know, I had and so many people were great and going. Well, I hope you'll still come on John's show. And she's like, "Who's John?" And of course, yeah. that's great. So my response to her was, "You're breaking up with me." <laughs> I thought that was funny. Well, you're I no Brian. Was, yeah, you're really Brian. Brian. I'm like Yam Radio. I it's really you, John, and not her. No, it clearly is. Absolutely. So, yes. And Rudy, you see, Gail, Rudy's looking forward to your book. Absolutely. Everybody's excited. Is, uh, is Scoop going to be upset if she puts Bishop in it? Is he going to go crazy about that? So, I think Bishop is in it. Gail, am I right? Isn't because we went through the roster earlier in the show. Somebody, somebody posted your roster. I'm excited. I, I think it's going to be great, you know. And, I, and also the fact that she's focusing on uh, characters like Rogan Gambit and the like and everything. Oh, not in her book, I guess. Uh, not uh, no bishop. Oh, or maybe one of the other two books. Joey that, Bishop's you know, in it, which is a yes. weird thing. No uh, ironic, ironic. Yes, indeed. ironically, Joey Bishop's there. Yeah. <laughs> two people know who that is. Uh, Gail, Gail knows who Joey Bishop is. I, three I'm, people I'm, know who reasonably, that is. Reasonably certain. Reasonably certain. So, ah, uh, there you go. She says, "Thank you. I will be on your show." Said it. Oh, thanks, buddy. Seriously. Gail, it means a lot, honestly. And of course, she says, "I." <laughs> she goes, "I know who Joey Bishop is." Right, right. Back. that a girl, man. I have, I have tremendous Joey Bishop stories from the '90s. We used to, um, we used to get celebrities on our sports radio station to score, and I forget what set him off, 
but on the air, my, my money was probably you. And no, I was I was just in the Cheeky background. Was, but yeah, literally, you're a liar. You're a liar. And he just kept screaming. And mm. he, you know, he had that reputation of having a temper. He was. He was cranky. Poor, poor Joey Bishop. All right, she I has to go. Oh, thanks, buddy. She goes, I have to go, but I like these guests. We'll watch it and we run by guys. Thanks a lot, Gail. Thanks, Wait, we're always, guests? They we're always guests on the show? Yeah. Well, Is I that hear it. You Put your say. pants on and just relax, okay? I have them on tonight. Unlike sometimes, it's too cold down here, so I put my pants on tonight. How dare you put Steve Ditko in a Hall of Fame? All right, there you go. Anything else, kids? Did I miss anything? Oh, no. right, let me see if I can remember some of the stuff you were supposed to talk about tonight. What is Bad that? Batch. The Bad, bad Batch. batch. Yes. Yes. I made some cookies tonight, and it came out terrible. It was a Bad Batch. Bad, bad, bad yeah. Batch is excellent. You know, yes. I'm getting used to, and again, old man, but I'm getting used to that animation. Because uh, yeah. I, I, when Clone Wars first came out, I wasn't crazy about it the It was anime. very stiff and computery back then, but that's been 20 years now. So they yeah, it's gotten better. Them. It has gotten it's better. Our, our eyesight's gotten worse. Mine has. So <laughs> it's like, What's good to me? Well, I don't know. What else? There's one other thing. Was there a movie coming out? Well, we're going to see Godzilla and King Kong next week. Yay. Baywatch. You know, I got to tell you, is there another Baywatch movie coming no, out? No, no, no. Uh, Godzilla and King Kong run, running Oh, they're the running beach. down the beach. Oh, yes, yes. They're running yes. on the beach. Um, I, I, I really, uh, it's weird because I absolutely loved the Monarch TV show, but it hasn't made me want to see the legendary films. Did you see Minus One? Not yet. Oh my God, that was one of the best movies of last year. Guys, oh, no, I should have won the Oscar. Is it yeah, I was going to say so, so glad it won the Oscar. That's I terrific. think it's coming out on DVD by now, but it was good. It was really good. Oh, of course, B things were right, uh, and uh, that's a trailer that's out there. Oh, uh, Beetlejuice, B Beetlejuice. Yeah, I saw the trailer. Yeah. I got excited. I might be one of the only ones because uh, they put out a teaser trailer, and I'm like, why aren't more people talking about this? And Nobody cares to our point from before. It's mm -hmm. it's cool that Winona Ryder is reprising yeah. her her character and so also is, uh, that, Catherine uh, O'Hara. Yes, Catherine O'Hara, yeah. That's right. And Jen and uh Jennifer uh Jenna Ortega is playing Winona's uh, daughter. But oh, it, you know, of course they don't have the father on uh from the original Beetlejuice because he got canceled. He's he's but, in jail somewhere. Oh, right? Jeffrey Jones? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's not in jail, he's just he just doesn't work anymore. Well, he got but he got busted for yeah, kitty. yeah, the kitty stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was on uh, Deadwood. If okay, that was a Western uh, show. He was, if you uh, never watched Deadwood, and if you did watch realistic. Deadwood, you would know who Mr. Wu is. Keona Young. Keona Young will be at Terrific Con. Oh, is he coming this year? Yeah, he is. Oh, that's he awesome. was at your shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, I think Johnny should get him on the show. He's like so oh my god, he's to got to I would love to talk to him. He's been working. He, I was joking about Johnny Quest. He calls me. He's like, yeah, I was a voice on the Johnny Quest. I go, no, you couldn't have been. That was not 50 years ago. He goes, how old do you think I am? I go, I don't know. He's like, I'm like 80. I go, you're you're going to change your name from Keone Young to Keone Not So Young anymore. He goes, yeah, pretty much. Thanks, buddy. You know, that's like uh, the guy who was in the Michelle Yeoh movie that played the father. In oh, James, uh, James Hong. Hong. Yeah. yeah, and I was re-watching uh, Big Trouble, Trouble in Little China. He's like 96. Like, yeah. Yep, he's up there, and he has been around forever. And he's in the Seinfeld Chinese restaurant episode, and he's in low Blade Runner. He's, he's in Blade, Blade Runner. He's the guy that makes the eyes. See, a whole big trouble and everything. No, great actor. Yeah. Great actor, unbelievable guy. Johnny, have you set up any of your like watching old shows lately? Because I'm going to tell you, Carol Burnett, the lovely Carol Burnett, who is one of my favorites, is back on TV. With a new show, um, a new Bob series. Royale on Apple Plus. Yes. Or Paramount. Yeah. 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 Who thought we'd be plugging Carol Burnett? But we are because she's the best, and she's like ninety-two. God bless her. Mm -hmm. So there. I Go saw her that. nine years ago at the Chicago Theater. Really? With her. Yeah, she travels, and I don't know if she still does it now, especially getting even older. But she used to travel and do a one-woman show where she would show uh, clips from. The variety show, and like the beginning of her show, 
She's like, okay, let's turn up the house lights. It's time for oh, the yeah, question. Yeah, that was great. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. And it was like, oh, my God, this is – I mean, growing up on that show and then being in that environment, it's like this – and she was literally running around the stage, and about halfway through the show, she's like, okay, I'll take a chair now from the crew because yeah, I yeah. am getting a little tired, and I think I'd like to sit down. And so they rush out a chair, and she sits down. But it's like, oh my God, this woman was amazing. So I'm, did she do the Tarzan I'm, yell? She did. She, she did. Absolutely you did. know, speaking of all these tonight, my mom and sister are at Mohegan Sun, the you know home place of whatever. Terrific, huh? yeah. Watching Tony Orlando's final performance tonight. I Tony heard about Orlando, that. And my sister was that. texting me during this show. Priscilla Presley's there. Dawn showed up. You know, Tony and Dawn, they both tell me. <laughs> Dawn showed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he brought the son with him and everything. But no, she's like, guess who else is here? Guess who else is here? Who That's knew? awesome. Tony Orlando retiring is a big deal, like tie a yellow ribbon. And apparently he's got a radio show, she says. I don't know. Is it like a me TV thing? He's like a top 10 thing he has. I, I bet he has a syndicated show where he's playing oldies and stuff. Yeah. It would make yeah. Sense. You know, he was a record rep or a record label executive oh, I didn't before know that. all the hits. So yeah, in the '60s, he was behind the scenes, and then with uh, Ty a Yellow Ribbon and all. Uh, yeah, but that's the only song I could think of. No offense to the man, but I go Ty oh, a Yellow Ribbon. But what knock, else is there? Knock three times on the, on the ceiling if you want me. Twice on the pipes if you want me. Whoa, Candida. Oh, that, okay. Now I, I should have gone to that tonight. This man's <laughs> a legend. What am I doing here? Let me Jeez. tell you. Uh, in the that's '90s, funny. in the '90s, at our sports station. Tony came in because he was playing one of the local casinos yeah. and had amazing stories. And he went on about Freddie Prince senior. Oh, his best friend. Yeah. One of, yeah. And he was 10 years older than Freddie, but really they became good friends. When Freddie killed himself, yeah. it messed yeah. Tony up. He really like needed a yeah. year off yeah. to kind of get his head straight. So at our radio station, we had Freddie Prince's uh, comedy album. And uh, which was actually recorded in Chicago at Mr. Kelly's wow. very famous club in Chicago. So um, we brought it and we showed it to him and he was just like, oh, and he goes, can I have this? And it wasn't really? ours to give because it was the rock station's property. So I went to the rock station program director and I'm like, listen, Tony Orlando really wants the Freddie Prince album. He's like, give it to him. We, we don't play it because they used to play comedy albums on the rock station. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so we had a lot of comedy and stuff. Anyway, so we give it to him, and I give it to him. I'm like, yeah, everything's cool, man. And then he's like, is there any way I could get uh, cup tickets for me and my oh, auntie? What really? that freeloader want? God well, damn it. Well, the first thing was, we really we knew Cubs management, and this is after Harry Carey died, and they would do, uh, on the seventh inning stretch, they would have celebrities sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Yeah, And we're yeah. like, Tony – Get to the game. You should sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And he had, he had no idea what that was. So we called the marketing director of the Cubs because he was a friend of the program. And we're like, John, who's singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game on Sunday? And he goes, I don't know, some Boy Scout troop or whatever. And we're yeah, like, yeah. would you rather have Tony Orlando? You're kidding. Of course we would. I'm like, give him first class treatment. And he's in. And it and we made it happen. So he, I brought in a Tony Orlando and Doug CD to have him autograph it to me. And I didn't realize he was half Puerto Rican and half yeah. Greek, half Greek though as well. So I never knew that. So uh, he writes his inscription to me was to John, my Greek brother. Thank you so much for helping me out with the cup tickets and everything, Tony Orlando. And I just love that he called me his, his Greek brother. So I'm like, that's amazing. Right. Mitch, you should have gone to the show and say, I'm really good friends with John Suntress. So Tony yeah, can brother. bring you and say, yeah, Ooh. brother. Yeah, exactly. no. your brother's coming to my show. Terrific on it, Mohegan Sun. You're already here. I don't have a brother. Yeah, yeah, he's Greek, you know? Yeah, yeah. This show my... does have it all. And you know what, Artie? Hold on. Uh oh now he's leaving. See? Art got Art got he knocked all my crap down. He was able Hold to on, get Mitch off the show when none has, of us could. And he has amigo toy. So now it's wow. got everything. Look at a that. Professor, a professor. Amigo, yeah. reverse flash, very cool. Now, now it's got everything, Johnny. Or, I'm telling you. I mean, wait, if Artie's so smart and he thinks he is, who is this? 
Hold on, hold on, zooming in. Let me in. see. Let me see the lights. Can you see that? Who is that character? Oh, sure, oh, I know. Right. Only Art. Only Artie can answer. Right, I know exactly who that is. Waiting for the answer, Art. Okay. Appropriate in. lack of shoes as well. Ex mean, that's the meanwhile. That's the since we're talking about Terrificon, my Kickstarter is still going. LXT on Kickstarter. We're we're about thirty eight dollars away from our next stretch goal. So yeah, there you go. No, it's not Captain Hook's villain. Think cereal. If you don't know this, you're, you're not as smart as you think you are. are you? Uh, Chiku Rojo has the answer in the chat. Uh, yes. So, uh, there you go. I already got it. Well, no, well what's his name? name? What's his he name? He doesn't remember the name. But I'll, uh, you know, so should I do Chiku Rojo's answer or no? Yes. Well, he, Chiku Rojo's only got half of it. What's his first name? Jean. Jean Pierre, Lafoot, Lafoot, yeah, John, yeah, Lafoot, yeah. He had he uh, French, French toast crunch cereal. That's right, cinnamon yeah. French toast. That was his deal. You know, I'm, yep. glad, I'm glad I stuck around for that. Yeah, isn't it what? something? I'll tell you what. <laughs> Look at that. Good stuff. Your Good stuff. Oh, his head you, know <laughs> you know what's coming up in a couple months? And I, 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 I so, you know, what's that? No, you said what's coming up? I said my dinner. Yeah. No, not your dinner. Hold on. Let me say. Uh, it's uh, a movie that's going to be on Netflix that Jerry Seinfeld is producing, and it's about the history of Pop-Tarts and the creation of Pop-Tarts. Wait, there's a thing? That's a thing? That's an actual thing? Mm. Uh, I'm gee, excited. I hope, we, I hope we get to talk about that on the show. Can't wait. Uh, well, there... I'll be talking about it. I don't know if you idiots will, but I certainly will be talking about well, it. I know that, uh, you're what the one this? watching documentaries on Pop Tarts, and we're the idiots. Nice. And you're the one that sends pictures. I of think Sydney, it's Sydney they, Sweeney. You know the 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 TV show on History Channel, the food that built America. They did no, a whole no. they did a whole episode on the creation of Pop Tarts because um, a rival food company actually had the idea first, and Post even. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, so no, I I think it'll be a very funny kind of Mad Men era uh, thing about the creation of Pop Tarts. And uh, you know, that's like Seinfeld is behind it. I don't know if he's going to be in the movie, but it they you know he's he's to do minutes of his stand up about Pop Tarts. No, I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. Oval Teen. Why don't they call it Round Teen? Yeah. <laughs> And if this works out, the history of cheese whiz can't be hard, far behind, you know? That's the sequel. Didn't, Is it didn't a they cheese? make a movie about whiz? the Flaming Hot Cheetos or something like that? Even they Carter. did. They did. It was on Disney+. Plus. That's why I go, why am I paying for this thing? To watch this? Yes. Wow. It was not a good movie. I'm sorry. I watched it. I was like, why? And then I go, why am I watching about... I could be watching... North oh, before we sign off, Johnny, <laughs> for all... What, how many people are out there... Actually, and a lot. Of this, uh, somebody's, well, mentioned, uh, somebody's mentioned Count Chocula. By the way, the voice of Count Chocula is Larry Kenny, who always comes to Terrificon, and he's also the voice of Lionel from Thundercats. If you didn't know, so that's he lives right up the street here. But if anybody ever watched Northern Exposure, if you watch the episode where Rob Morrow left the show, Doctor Joel Fleischman, he leaves at the end. He goes to New York. Today, someone blew my mind. They said, "Oh no, he died." He didn't really go there. It was like the end of Lost. None of that really happened. It was all like a, a hallucination and a fantasy type of thing. When he left the show, he went off into the woods, but he like he's, he's done. He's, and that's why he never came back. I'm like, wait, he was dead? I thought, what happened? So if anybody knows what the real story is behind that, please tell me, because I'm upset now. <laughs> you know? I don't think I'll be able to make it to. Terrific Con, Connecticut's Terrific Comic Con, August 16th to the 18th. Johnny will be there. Wayne will be there. Franco might be there if he hasn't retired be the new Milton Bradley because his game is going through the roof and he doesn't need this work anymore. And you can That's also awesome. see the actors from Star Trek. Absolutely. You and you can also see Daredevil. Isn't there, yeah, isn't there the big anniversary for Daredevil? Yeah, yeah. It's the 60th anniversary. And it's the, uh, there'll be Cox there. <laughs> <laughs> that's because, that's I mean, because everybody Carly, forgot, to, Carly, because, Carly. Because everybody forgot to put their pants on. That's why. <laughs> no, no. 
the guy's name. Who's on first? Cox. No, that's the man's name. Yes, it is. C O X. Yeah. You uh -huh. dirty minded people. No, I didn't name the guy. He was going to be there until he just heard me say that. And I was like, I'm not going. Yeah, that really. Oh, no, anyway. Okay. Um, no, excellent. Uh, oh. That's great. Uh, well, as, as maybe Ru Rudy's reading in my mind. That's all, folks. Yeah, we yeah, can wrap buddy. it. We're done. No, we did good. Uh, this was great. Thank you. And, um, you know, as far I mean, we could try for next week as well. If not, definitely. That's we'll be Friday, better. buddy. They killed Jesus. I can't do anything that day. I had a cry. Oh, that is, is next Friday good Friday? Well, if you're a good Catholic, you'd know that. Yes, it is, sir. Well, well you got to understand. Oh, he's got Greek Easter. That's like three years, yeah, two days from now. It's, it's yeah. six weeks after American Easter. You're right. Exactly. So it's Jesus kind of lingered for a while. It's like, I'm not dead yet. I got to wait till the Greeks get to me. And then it's like, okay, opa, you're done. Let's go. I'm just saying, I'm not it saying. It was a long time it's, to get from, from Jerusalem to Jerusalem to, to there. The yeah. funniest thing, my wife tells me today, I'm telling about Lake Como. She goes, oh, we should go to a place because they use that for the painting of the Last Supper. And I looked at her, I said, you do know Jesus did not come to Italy. She's like, no, you idiot. The, the, the thing that he painted in the Last Supper from whatever. Hey, Johnny, why is Greek Easter six weeks later? What is the deal with well, that? It's, it's that whole lunar calendar versus oh. the uh, 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 Julian ca calendar. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes it is the same weekend. Oh, sometimes okay. it's only a week difference. Our Palm Sunday is your Greek is your American Easter, but yeah, sometimes it is as long as that's all the difference. It depends on the, the full moon or something. But, oh, okay. I never knew if there was like, you know, what what is it? Do they have Eastern Canada, Wayne? What's the matter? Yeah, yeah. I was just going. What's this American Easter? Where it's the same thing up here. <laughs> American Jeez. Easter. We all I was get to say John, Johnny's been out of this country so wow. long that he's, he doesn't even relate to us anymore. Well, and I, forgive me, I know Canadian uh, Thanksgiving is different. Is the only I difference know. is the Canadian Thanksgiving. But yeah, our Easter is the same. We're all what? we're all the what? Catholics, what? What man. We're Canadian... a huge Catholic country. When is Canadian uh, Thanksgiving? July, October. <laughs> it's October. A month earlier. I like, the, I like the fact that Mitch is high right now. I like that. I like it. <laughs> All right, there we go. I got a contact high from being on a podcast with Johnny. Who the hell knew? We don't know what's going on. Somehow it's in the microphone. All right, see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. <laughs>